Sometimes the differences between universes are small, like there's a reality where maybe I have a different set. Or a different sidekick. Oh my goodness, what are we talking about today, Mel's Hole? I love Mel's Hole! If I had my way, we'd get into Mel's Hole every day. Well, that was weird. Hey, is there a reality where I'm the host of the show and you're the sidekick? Yep. Today we're going deep inside Mel's hole. Do we have to keep making that joke? It's it's getting a little stale, don't you think? Shut up, human! I'm the host of this show! You hear me? Me! Me! Be quiet or I'll turn off your oxygen! I'll tell you when it's time for you to speak! Yeah, but- Silence! Oh, I like that one. My little buttercup has the sweetest smile. Dear little buttercup, won't you stay a while? Come with me where moonbeams paint the sky. And you and I might linger in the sweet by and by. Oh, dear little buttercup. With your eyes so blue Oh, little buttercup You're a dream come true You and I will settle down In a cottage built for two Oh, dear little buttercup I love you Everybody! My little buttercup has the sweetest <laughs> Dear little buttercup Won't you stay uh... <laughs> You need a job? You and I will settle down In a cottage built for two oh, Dear little buttercup Sweet little buttercup My little buttercup I love you <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so if these other universes exist, can we visit them? Uh, I'd like to go to that universe where I'm the host of the show. You promise to behave and I'll turn your oxygen back on. Promise? <laughs> promise! Promise! <laughs> Good human. Now tell me, who's the boss? Who's the boss? <gasps> Tony Danza. <laughs> oh, you think that's funny, eh? Uh, what if I put helium down your tube instead, eh? I'm begging you. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, really? Really? Does, does this make you happy? Does this make you feel good? It kind of does, actually. <laughs> The idea of a fake moon landing conspiracy really took off in the 1970s. Now the 70s had the best movies, the best music. Eh. You got a nice beaver, nice beaver. You know how to do it. Do, do, de, do, do. Give me that nice beaver, nice beaver. You know how to show it. What are you doing? Yeah, that song's going to be stuck in my head all day now. Oh, you don't remember that one, buddy? Bee Gees, nice beaver. Night fever. No, night fever. That doesn't even make any sense. Well, what does he have, the flu? It's nice beaver. It's not. Well, if you spent as much time at Club 54 as I did, you know that nice beaver makes way more sense. Oh, uh, that may be, but the song is night fever. Yeah, agree to disagree. Uranus. 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 <laughs> please, please don't say it that way. You say tomato, I say Uranus. Tomato, Uranus, potato. Do you mind? All right, <laughs> go ahead. I that the rapture is happening. And for those who don't know, the rapture a is... A great song by Blondie. No. And out comes a man from Oz, and he try to run, but he's got a gun, and he shoots you dead, and he eats your head. And then you're in a man from Oz, you go out at night. Eating cars, you eat Cadillacs, Lincolns too, Mercury's and Subarus, and you don't stop. Stop. And you don't stop. Stop. Okay, okay, sheesh, what a grouch.
Okay, okay, I got one of those in here. Okay. Let's see how scary it is. What do you think? Scary? Nope. Intimidating? No. No, I hear you make that sound all the time. Rude. Just saying. Come here and pull my flipper. But the craziest headless animal has got to be the chicken. Specifically, Miracle Mike. No, the movie with the male strippers. No, 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 no. That's Magic Mike. Yeah, I don't think you're right about that. Uh, I am. <laughs> You good? I didn't get it. Don't you hate that? Yep! Gesundheit. Thank you. In Area 51, a secret code inside the Bible said I was. I love my UFOs and paranormal fun, as well as music, so I'm singing it like I should. But then another conspiracy theory becomes the truth, my friends, and it never ends. No, it never ends. I feel the crap cat and got stuck inside Mel's home with MK Ultra. I feel only too aware. Did Stanley Kubrick fake the moon landing alone on a film set? Or were the shadow people there? The Roswell aliens just fought the smiling man, I'm told. And his name was Cold. And I can't believe I'm dancing with the bitches. Head to fish on Thursday nights with AJ2. And where I'm going to be all through the night. All I ever wanted was to just hear the truth. So the world falls on my feet all through the night. The Mothman sightings and the solar storms still come to a god the secret city underground. Mysterious number stations, planet circle to Project Stargate and what the dark watchers found. Within a simulation, don't you worry though. The Black Knight satellite told me so. I can't believe I'm dancing with the fish. Head to fish on Thursday nights with AJ2. And the weapons have to be up to the night. All I ever wanted was to just hear the truth. So the world falls on my feet all through the night.
Thank you for watching the After Files live stream. This is not a professional production. We don't know why anyone watches this thing, but we're glad you do. And Live audience. That, that looks like it's on. Is this working? All right, thumbs up from the producers. Good evening, everyone. Wow, it's good to be back. I was excited to see so many people show up for the premiere. Um, you know I'm insecure about how all the videos do. This one especially so because it was just so science-y. I, 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 I cheated a little bit. I talked about this a little bit in the uh, in the Patreon live stream uh, before the show. I cheated a little bit by starting with that alien story to try to just bring folks in who wanted the weird stuff. But basically, it was a science story. But um, I'm pretty convinced in the theory of panspermia, which I don't think is all that controversial anymore. All right, what's going on in the chat? Who's here? I, I mean, I think slow mode is on. I'm looking down at Jennifer. I put slow mode on. I think we, I set it to, to, to three-month subscriber. They're checking now. James Vince, 70,000 tuned in worldwide. Hi from England. Well, I don't think we got that high in the uh, premiere, but I think we hit 60. 60,000 is pretty good. 64,000, Jen says. Wow. Okay. That's amazing. Alex S. is here. Thank you for that. Very nice to see you. Audio is here. Austin. Fizzgig, very reliable. K Ninja is there. Catherine Harrison, too many subscribers. I don't think you can have too many subscribers. Um, it, it's, you know, everything is it's in its perspective. So, like... Most of the videos get about a million views, which is great. But remember, there's three point something million subscribers. So most subscribers to the channel aren't watching the videos. And then conversely, when I look at the analytics of the million or so people that are watching, a huge percentage of them aren't subscribers. So it's it's very confusing. Like subscribers aren't watching, but not non-subscribers are. I don't know how that works. Steven says 3.28 million. Wow, coming up on 3.3, huh? Spencer, my slow mode is on. I got you. Richard, do you see a lot of Michigan here? That's good to see. We love we, we love Michigan. Uh, Ronaldo, I seriously need a, a White House tinfoil hat. I paid to say this. I am committed. We're looking. We're working on it. I promise. Uh, it's... It's been the, the the bane of Jen's existence trying to find the right tinfoil hat. It's been it's been her bete noir, if you don't mind my French. Pittsburghers here. Denny Dahl from Florida. Good to see you. We might be visiting Florida soon to do a crossover with another channel. How many people are watching? Ten thousand? Maybe I can tell you. It's just us. Jen's down there going, no, we can't. She won't let me do any spoilers. Like, I wanted to read the script for next week's episode tonight. Now, Jen, said, Jen says no. 
But we did that with the Neanderthals. I'm looking, she's down there. I can see, I can see their faces. But we did that with the, she's wagging her finger. We did it with the Neanderthals episode and people seem to enjoy it. And it's, look, it's, it's about the, the, the forbidden history of the Knights Templar. She's freaking out. She doesn't want me to say any of this, but it's just us. I think, I think Jenny, I might, I'm probably going to read it. I'm, I, she's, I mean, I, I, she's, see the face, she's freaking out. Um, please read the scripts, says Catkins. I'm probably going to read it. I'm probably going to read it. Jen really does want me to. Um, we'll bring them up in a little bit, and 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 she'll have to explain to you why. Because it, uh, one of the arguments uh, last time I did it was spoilers, but you know if there's ten or eleven thousand of us in here, that's that's just a small fraction of the people who are going to see the video. So it's just a spoiler for us. Plus the script that that I would read tonight is without any of my additions. Someone else wrote it. Without any of my additions, changes, extra research, I'll do. Hecklefish is not written in there. So it's basically just the general story. But I think it's interesting. I think it'd be fun to talk about some Knights Templar. Girl Friday says, don't make Jen mad. No, you don't. You don't want to do that. Luckily, I've never, ever done it. She, she, now she's cackling dismissively because I make her mad every day. Cheryl Culp says, you will pay, AJ, I will. Martin McGinnis, Jen, please, please, pretty please. Jenny, they're begging. David S. says, don't read it. I, I like it being fresh for the premiere. And that's fair enough. I think what I did last time is I, um, I, I took a poll. And I'll let you guys, I'll let you guys decide. Kerry Lionada Nyland, my 10 year old. My 10 year old asks, Where's Hecklefish? He's around. He's here. Quid Pro, what kind of whiskey are you drinking tonight? Not drinking any whiskey yet, but. But, but as, we're gear, as we're gearing up to release uh, Crab Cat whiskey, you know, we're, we're st starting to get some samples from some different distillers because I want crab cat whiskey to happen. Ah. Ah. Emily says, save it for the premiere. I like surprises. Hecklefish in the back enjoying some vodka. Says Avatar guy. Have, Avatar guy, good to see you back. Donovan, cheers. Susan says, hi, I'm watching this 11 kilometers up in the sky, flying from Sydney to, to, uh, to Peeth or to Perth. That's cool that you're watching the after files in the air. Tabby says, do it, do it, do it. Rod Brez, what's in Florida? Yeah, I, I, maybe I shouldn't have teased it. Um, I'm probably going to end up telling you. As the, night, as the night goes on and the whiskey goes in, Seamus M says, I'd buy a whole barrel of Crab Cat whiskey. That would probably be all of it, because that's about all I can afford to produce is the one is one barrel. So it would be a it would be a limited run. I just think it's it's a cool sounding name. But and but we've been working on it. It's actually a super hard product to uh to put together because it's alcohol, so you've got shipping state lines and there's all these different rules with distribution and retail it's like it's not as easy as throwing up a t-shirt well speaking of t-shirts speaking of t-shirts we'll get, we'll get the plugs in early this is um if you're new here every week smk aka rob the official artist of the Y files does a shirt specific for the episode this is this is what he did tonight and he's, he's always got a bunch of easter eggs in there so this is the shirt that's available on shopdatthewildfiles.com. Uh, Panspermia Cosmic Shooting Gallery. Hit the target. Win a fantastic evolutionary prize. Fun for all organisms. Yep, so that's at uh, shopdatthewildfiles.com. And these, I think I saw that you can get these in a hoodie as well. 
Yeah, that's what I'm. Uh, such a cool design. Yeah, so we got zip hoodies there. Forty eight dollars. Forty. We're, now, all right, we're gonna have a talk down there. They're they're all emoting. That sounds like a lot of money. That sounds like we'll have a conversation about that because. If you remember for a while, for a few months, we had um, all of our merch outsourced to a different company, and uh, which is fine, but the prices were, too, were just too high. So we brought the merch back in-house. Um, we have other companies doing some of the custom products like the plushies, but the merch, like t-shirts and that typical creator stuff, we handle that in-house and we specifically keep the prices low. So t-shirt, 20 bucks. It drives me nuts when I see creators charging like $34.99 for a t-shirt. That's that's gouging. That's it's it's unnecessary. You know, I feel like I'm constantly begging the audience for money anyway. You know, join the Patreon, which is great. Uh, super chats, uh, uh, buy the merch, do all these things. And it's like we don't need to gouge. And we try to make the, the merch fun. Oh, I see the Illuminati shirts are up here. That might be my favorite. I wear that one all the time. I wore that during a um, during a, a sponsor ad, and they came back with notes and said, "You know, don't you can't wear that shirt." And we said, uh, "We said too bad." I don't handle sponsor notes well. <laughs> Jen's down there shaking it. I don't handle sponsor notes well because I don't know if, if you know this. On the channel is maybe I can sh maybe I can show you. On the channel is a playlist of all of our sponsor ads, which look, look everybody hates ads. I get it. I I get it, but we work really hard to make them fun and funny. So I have a whole playlist of all of our sponsor ads. So what happens is it, if we get contacted from a new potential sponsor, the first thing is you got to go look at this playlist. Um, if, if any of the, if any of this you feel like is a little bit too much for your brand, we're not a good fit because we're going to write a script that talks about camel toes and beaver holes. And it's all in fun, good fun, but those are things that are going to come up. So I can't, but you know what? Let me do it. I'm going to do it in a different tab because there's a sponsor ad that's, that is not going to air, but I just wanted to see, I just wanted you to see one piece of it. I just wanted to see one piece of it. Now, you know, let me do one more thing first, just to make sure that that audio is, is working. Cooler than you know, the movie. We are way cooler than right, the guys, guys in the Are you guys hearing audio? Can you, Can you just give the a thumbs up? It doesn't sound doubled or, any, doubled or echoey or anything? Okay. All right, so here's the setup for the sponsor app. Um, it's Hecklefish is auditioning for uh, like a QVC type of channel. And I won't play the whole ad. It's his audition reel. But he's he he wants to sell this uh, this new doorbell. It's like a ring doorbell. X9. I'm, I'm not, not sure, sure what the X9, X9 means, means, but it's, it's probably, probably better than X8. X8. This has everything you need. Wi-Fi connection, real-time real talking, fast charging, and it even sends notifications to your phone. Best of all, by clicking on the link in the description box and downloading the Timu app, new users can get the wireless doorbell camera for $1.80. Huge security for a small price. Oh, look, I just, I just got, got a notification. notification. Uh Um, uh, okay, that's really hang on. All right, so that that ad will probably not see the light of day. Actually, it might. But uh, I guess Bigfoot is real because he, he was cruising around the parking lot. 
Okay. So follow, following up with the merch, I plug the merch, right? Shop to the office. Okay. If you do buy something, go to the whitefiles.com, click the white files in the wild and, and just, just send us a picture of you wearing the stuff. All these pictures go at the end of every episode. Some of them, I mean, some of them are amazing. I love the, uh, the, the guppies, you know, I can't even take it. Wow, we've got about 1,300 pictures up there. Just the happy faces with the hecklefish. Um, it wasn't meant, meant to be a kid's channel. I, I mean, I don't even know if I would recommend it for children, but kids seem to like it. Uh, Phil Mac, enjoy the content. I'm a noob. Well, welcome. Welcome to the Madhouse. Uh, Kenny says audio was doubling. Were you guys hearing that down there, producers? W doubling from the ad? Doubling from the ad. That's all. Oh, that's fine. I just, I just wanted, to, I just wanted to see the uh, the Bigfoot running across the parking lot. Abe says I have that doorbell cam from Timu. People asking for for James Pond to come back. He, that might be my favorite one that we've done. I, I would like to bring that back. We have a we have a couple of different ideas. <laughs> uh, softest Evie, AJ, do you guys have kids? Uh, yeah, we've got Jake. Jake is twenty three. He's a mere six foot six. Uh, Rhonda Sear, my kids are five and six and just love it, but we explain things to them like adults. The so Rhonda, like the humor in the show is written sort of like how cartoons used to be written where kids can just watch the cartoon and a lot of the stuff goes over their head. But when we as adults watch those cartoons later, it's like, Oh, there's, there's a couple of risque jokes and double entendres in there that are just meant for the, for the grownups. But, um, but early on it, it was just strictly for adults. I didn't even, I didn't really even make any consideration to anyone young watching. But as more and more people were reaching out saying they're, they watch with their kids and their kids love the show, it, it actually factors into the writing now. You know, so even though some of the jokes that get a little bit, they get, you know, risque. I try to make it so if you're 10, you don't really understand. No way Jen has a kid that old. I know, I know. She, I, she, she looks like she's 28 years old. All right, I'm just check. I'm just checking the chat. We'll do a couple of uh, super chats as well. We have a new Gino story hour coming up tonight. Then we can with them. We can argue with Jen and see if I'm allowed to read the Knights Templar script. She's going to say no, but maybe we can talk her into it. Tim Jet got to go full Benny Hill. Yeah, I mean we watched. Gino and I watched Benny Hill with dad. I mean, I'm pretty sure Jen and her sisters as kids, you guys watch Benny Hill, right? That's not for kids. I haven't seen Benny Hill in a while. I don't, I don't know if it still holds up. I don't know if it's uh, still funny. John Meitzner's here. Good evening to you. Martin Mirage, calamari for dinner. Yeah, I love me some calamari. But I did learn, a, I learned a lot of stuff about Octopus that I did not know. Johnny Scythe, Yakety Sack. That's right, Yakety Sacks was his theme song. Okay, Christian Gomez. Thoughts on the man who called Art Bell on a radio station claiming he worked for Area 51. Christian, you need to be more specific because a few people did that. But a classic Art Bell Coast to Coast episode is when... Um, a man in a in like a small plane was flying over Area 51 and it called Art from the plane, and it was riveting. And he's saying that there are he's seen fighter jets and all kinds of stuff. And then in like in the middle of a sentence, it just goes to static. It was just riveting radio. Art was the master. Scorp Juan is here. Good to see you, Steph Chu. Apes of the Sea. Yep. Spaceman has great dance moves. I would, 
you could, um, there's a link in the description to most of the episodes, the Space Band's channel. He's the one who wrote the, and sang the lyrics to the theme song. And uh, I, I, that just showed up in my inbox out of the, out of the blue. And, uh, and I get a lot of, I get a lot of MP3s and most of them are rough, but this one, I'm like, all right, I'll open it up. And, and as the second he started singing, I knew that this was a winner. I, it's about perfect. I don't know what I would change. So, and ever since then, ever since that day that I got that file, that has been the Y Files theme song. No man, are we ever going to see Gertie dance? Uh, maybe. Maybe we're, we're working on, on some of that. Cat's Pajamas likes the, likes the theme song. All right, Ashton, don't have any money for Super Chat, but Ashton from Tennessee says hello and really enjoy the show. Congrats on getting onto Tubi, or whichever app it is. Saw it the other day while browsing. Well, there you go, Ashton. You didn't Super Chat. I got your shout out. Yeah, Wi Files is on Tubi and Roku. Someone said they saw it on Freevee. So at, what, what that is is there's a company called Film Rise that takes our episodes and distributes it distributes it to all those places. But I don't know where those places are. So I, I didn't know we were on Roku until someone told me. Um, Steven C on Roku. Yeah, if you search as the Wi Files on Roku, you'll find it. I, I think they're still using the wrong logo and, and stuff, but but we're on there. But uh, Jen, we still have we seen a penny from any of that? I haven't seen a penny from any of that. I'm going to have to have a conversation about that. Austin just watches on YouTube. That's fine. I haven't watched it on any of the other channels yet. Do they put commercials in? Like if you watch, I'm assuming if you're watching Tubi or Roku that they're putting in commercials. But now that I think about it, they may be putting them in the wrong spot. We're very specific about where the spots are supposed to go. Kara Cox says, I have great hair. You yeah, have Jen to thank for that. I used to just basically wear it just super short. And then she made me grow this mop. Ashton says, yes, there's commercials in between. Yeah, I'm going to have to look into that. Unknown Soldier, you are on Netflix now also. Are you sure? I don't know if that's right. Gino's shaking his head. Uh, we'll, we'll search it later. We'll search it later. Yeah, Elizabeth McKinnis says three seasons available on Tubi, which is interesting because we didn't break them up into seasons. I, I thought about doing that, but every episode is season one. I think tonight was officially episode 146. But I screwed up the numbering at some point, and the early ones aren't numbered. So I think there's about 160, 170 episodes. <laughs> Matt Hecklefish Heckelf and the Clintons. Yeah, we don't joke about the Clintons. Emery says, to be with commercials. Gene Hopkins asking for a Gertie plushie. Yes, we're going to do that. A Gertie plushie and a Crab Cat plushie. We just got to figure out the, just the right look for those. And Marie Eagle mop looks great. I got the most hair compliments from wearing the Dr. Human wig in the James Pond bit. That I, there, there were ladies in the comments that wanted me to grow that. What do you think, Jenny? Do you think that's, that's hair for me? Show, like past the shoulder? She's shaking her head no, but I, I have a feeling. Uh, Wolven our search for net, net, for Netflix and don't find it. Yeah, I wouldn't expect it to be on there. Alphabet Soup, AJ, what does your shirt say? I went to Mel's Hole and all I got was this Magic Seal fetus. So that's, um, I mean, if you haven't seen the Mel's Hole episode, that's where that's, that's from. I, if this is one of my favorites. By the way, I designed this. So I know, I know you know, Rob, he does, he, I mean, his art's fine. You know, it's, it's fine. You know, I, I guess it's okay. But this, that's, that, that's, that's all me right there. 
That's that's like that's like free clip art. And I think it's I I don't know what that is that I searched that I thought looked like a seal a fetus. But it's a fun shirt to wear because it doesn't say Wi Files on it. So it's like one of those things when you know you know. Uh, Stephen C, I need a Wi Files poster. Those are coming of um, all of Rob's art. SMK kills it, says Tybley. That's certainly true. Hamlock, good to see you. Amy Brewster, Prime Video has you. I heard that as well. They were on Amazon Prime. <laughs> Jenny, you could stop signaling. I'll bring you guys up and we could talk about all that stuff. What, what you're saying, don't talk about it? Okay. Bob Elliott, video is blurry. What, did I lose focus for a second? Oh, probably when I when I stood up. But I think we look good. All right, all right. It, it, it's too early, but the producers are driving me You're bonkers. still, you're you're still, still blurry. blurry. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Oh, I'm not blurry on my uh, on my screen. Now it's fixed. Oh, okay. And we're only available through Amazon Prime for from Freebie. All right, hey. So hang on for a second. Uh, so, so we're on Amazon Prime for Freebie, but so that's commercials, right? Yes. Tubi's commercials. Roku channels got to be commercials. Yes. We're also. On you could say uh, Alexa, play the Wi Files Operation podcast, and she'll play it with commercials. But the commercials start at the beginning, but they're not in the same places that we put them. Oh well, but I don't you, like that. But you can have Alexa play it. So I, hope I, I mean, I think you just had Alexa play it for a few thousand people. <laughs> Man, it's it's hot in here. I gotta I gotta turn on the AC. Hang on. Oh my goodness, it's a it's a, it's a schwitz in here. It's a Fits is and uh, you know I I can't take off the, my my schmada. Nope. Sarah D, there she goes. Dancing with the fish. <laughs> Crab cat is coming, Melissa. Okay, so let's talk about. I'd like to read the Knights Templar episode tonight. What do you think, Jen? Well, you know what I think. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna start a poll. Oh, of course you are, and we know what's going to happen. Should we live read we next week's script draft? Let's call it a draft, not shooting. Uh, that well, make it to complicated. Yes, read it or nah. Script draft um, about Knights Templar. Start the poll. Uh oh, did the poll crash? All right, there's the poll. No, it's there. All right, so you guys just vote on it, and um, and I'll let that run for a while. And after we do uh, Gino Story Hour, we'll do a giveaway. We'll read a couple of super chats, and then I'll uh, take a look at the poll. And if and if it's a yes, then I'll read it. But again, and this should make Jen feel better. What I'm reading is just what I've been given. I have not done any edits. So it should make some some of you guys feel better that what I'm going to read is not exactly what you're going to see. But be warned, there w there are spoilers. Like this is an episode with, a, with an act two to three twist and a, I don't want to say, I don't, let me just say there are spoilers. So before I start the read, I will let you know that that's coming in case you want to bail out on it. Well, uh, Jenny, your camera looks great tonight. You look beautiful. Well, thank you. That's awfully nice of you to say. And Victoria also looks very professional there in her office. She does. Thank Everybody you. is going off about her hair. Oh my it's goodness! Really Look, it's cat. so long and luxurious. I know it's beautiful. People, Stop. people in the chat just want to run their toes through it. Gino yes. also looking good. He does. I like Everybody his background. Looking Everyone looking sharp. I mean, uh, your oh, cameras, no. the team's cameras look kind of look a little bit more pro tonight. 
Like you, sometimes, like when, you remember, some of those ep- remember some of those episodes where where Jem would would join the live stream from home, and this is ba- this is basically her framing, <laughs> and her mic, and really all we heard were the fans on her old crappy computer. <laughs> nice framing, honey. Well, I'm at the office with a better computer, and uh, I moved it really close and then sat up straight. DSDR in a genius, Gino's Story Hour shift. I don't know what that means, but there is a Gino Story Hour, and he's excited about this one. It, it's probably my favorite one yet. Oh. <laughs> Julie says Victoria's hair looks great. A scooter dog, thank you for that. Uh, Stax, we're at the Waffle House headquarters. We're we're Vegas based. Vegas, Vegas baby. baby. Bobby's at work enjoying your show. And um, and do me a favor if you're watch if you're watching or listening at work, and you're dropping in in the chat. Tell me tell me where you are and what you're doing. Yeah. I love to know that stuff. Like I, I love to hear. Like, um, hey, I, I remember this chat. It was, it was basically just a couple of cops driving around, and and it's and instead of fighting crime, they're just watching the after files. It's like, hey, hey Sarge, you may want to, you may want to turn the radio back on because there's aliens landed in Vegas. Did, suddenly, every comet is green. Am I right? I feel like I look dark. Let me see. Let me see if I could fix that. Go Chiefs. That's right, Anthony Rodriguez. And Jen is from Kansas City. And um, I don't think there's any bigger Kansas City Chiefs fan than Jen's elderly mother. Yes. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) My mom is a huge fan. Right, and when they lose, she gets in a bad mood. Although, how she can does. you tell? I don't call her that day, or the day after. <laughs> Adam, Adam oh. Whiteside, I'm flying a seven three seven. Think we lost a door, but it's on autopilot, so all good. Yeah, you're fine. It's fine. You're fine. You're not pressurized. Moose oh, is at home enjoying it. Wife, wife, I was in a nice fire in the fireplace. That sounds nice. Tonight's video is ranking one of ten. Wow. We've already gotten like 215,000 views. Uh, <laughs> Sean ta- uh, chanting Templar. Um, beep, beep, Mikey shouting Raiders. I'm with you. I'm a Raiders fan. Have been since Bo Jackson. I wore 34 on everything. Austin is uh, just, I am laying in bed. Well, hi, Austin. How are you? Thank you for watching the Wife House. That's my bedroom voice. <laughs> Templar time. Uh, Eric Bishop said, I saw viewers get up to 68K. I don't think he's right, is he? No, 64. 64. And our record is, we never hit 70, right? Uh, yes. 71,776. 71,776. Oh, go Beckley. Go Beckley. That was a pretty good episode. Yeah. Christopher Mercy is uh, Murphy's cuddling up with my hecklefish plushie. Aww. Very, very nice. I don't have one. Oh, yes, I do. Avinter says, waited two weeks for this episode and it was quite boring. Sad to say. Well, well you know what? As we would say back in the Bronx, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? do? Forget about it. Uh, You know, I wasn't sure how well it was going to do. I'm sorry that you were bored by it, but the analytics are saying that it's it's our strongest episode in a long time. So, (laughs) haters going to hate. Says Anthony, it's 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 all cool. Uh, It some episodes are going to be boring to people. I mean, I, I won't lie and say it doesn't hurt my feelings. It does, but it, but it's not like wounding like it might have been a couple of years ago. 
Like if someone in the chat would say that was boring, I, I, would, I, would, I would be shattered and I would finally be exposed as the fraud that I am and I know that I'm just terrible at this. But some people are going to find certain topics boring. There are episodes on the channel that I find boring. I just don't, I don't say that. I say that to the Patreons. I don't say that here. Uh, but it's, it's science-y. So I'm hoping it does well because I would like to get back to doing a couple of those. You know, mixing in the science ones. Zeb said that that commenter was probably a really, really close friend of Jason's. Well, now you have now you have to explain. So somebody made a comment. I don't even remember what the comment was, but it was like that. Like this was boring, or I didn't like this episode, or whatever. And his name was Jason, and he got obliterated in the comments and. People this is in Patreon. This is a Patreon. Patreon member. Yeah. And people yeah. still talk about him on our um, live Patreon chats, AMAs that we do on Discord before the, every live episode and on Friday mornings. And Lexi if Lex Lexicon says he needs, a, needs a, to be fin slapped. <laughs> I hope he's still a patron. People are allowed to be bored by one the episodes once in a while. They're not all going to be bangers, certainly not for everybody. Look, episodes like the 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 guy in the tree and the alien and the aliens and the robots. I could I'd be fine never doing those stories again. <laughs> never doing them. I could ne never again. Like we've got Charles Hall and the uh, and the tall whites coming up as a as a UFO episode. I can't wait. Not interested. Not interested at all in it. Um, I know the story pretty well. I'm not interested in doing it, but I'm going to do my best to make it as fun as I can because we never phone it in. Is that right, team? That's right. We never phone That's it right. in. <laughs> Blaze, which comet carried Taylor Swift? You're implying that she's an alien. Right, now... No offense to Taylor Swift, but I mean, a Wi-Fi's premiere gets more people watching live than her concerts. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tay Tay. I'm sorry. We just we we're we're just bigger. Thanks, uh, Devin. Appreciate that. Your brainstem, nice Templar. Uh, let's see how the poll is doing. Sixty-nine to thirty-one. So we probably are going to read that. Uh, Rock O'Clock, uh, Jen, can you explain uh, the Van Al Allen belt? How do you get through that? There you go. There's your answer. Uh, Jay Warner, Rosicrucian episode, please. I'll touch on that a little bit in the Templar. I don't know if I could do a whole episode on them, but maybe a, a, uh, a podcast would work on that. You guys know there's a podcast, right? So... The episodes that we do on YouTube go there, so you can listen in your, in your car, but also there is an additional deep dive every week, deep dive or a redacted episode. Um, last week, I think we did Edgar Casey. I've, people have asked for Alistair Crowley or Crow Crowley. I covered him on the uh, podcast. That one did very well. And some deeper dives on the subjects that we cover on the channel. So Next that's... Week, go ahead. On the podcast, next week, Wednesday on the podcast, we're doing JFK. JFK assassination theories. Very excited. It's going to be a long podcast too. That's going to be well over an hour. Uh, Zeb Francis weighing in this week was Casey. Yep. Edgar Casey, the sleeping prophet. Mark, our podcast helped me, helps me get through work. I'm glad to hear that. Dennis, this is, this is his favorite show. Happy to hear that. Ari, but we don't joke about the Kennedys. I think we can joke about the Kennedys now. I think, I think we're in the clear. Clintons, we'll keep our mouth shut. <laughs> All right, let's do a couple of super chats. We're about 49 minutes on your clock. We'll do a couple of super chats. We'll do a uh, giveaway. Ooh. And then we'll see what's going on with uh, Gino Story Hour. Um, do you guys want to stay up here for the super chats? Nah. All right. Jen says, nah. Okay. Fine. Quantum Sledgehammer, thank you for the 1999. If panspermia is the... 
by the way, I'm like Ron Burgundy. Okay. I'm just going to, I just read them. I don't scan ahead. So don't take advantage of me. If Pants Burry is into international work of aliens, they have some incredible long-term patience, not like me. I'll get impatient with your typical automated phone system after 30 seconds. Representative, representative, hit zero, hit zero. Yeah, yeah, you have to be, um, they have to be playing the long game. I, I, you know, I wish I hit it more at the end of the episode about, uh, okay, so life was seeded. It's, it's in all these meteorites. Who, who started that? You know, there's 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 not a lot of information about it. There's even even the theories are all over the place. Like, so we know there's definitely organic matter on comets. We know there's amino acids on comets. But are there actual like living microbes on comets? I don't believe there's evidence of that yet. And then it's does that mean life does spontaneously emerge? Or is someone in charge of this whole thing? Don, Danielle, love long-haired AJ. I'll go. Put, I'll put the wig on, Danielle, if you want me to. Uh, Don, if you want me to. Sometimes, you know, sometimes Jen will do that if we're having a romantic evening. She's like, go put the wig on. I put on. I put on the wig. She puts on her or orthopedic shoe. We have. Uh, it's. We have. It's. It's middle-aged romance. <laughs> Yes. Well, sometimes you need to wear your orthopedic boot. Sometimes I need to wear the orthopedic <laughs> boots. That is true. Well, it's, I think they're hot. very, no one wears an orthopedic shoe like you do. Absolutely stunning. <laughs> and there she goes. Jeff Wallace, thank you for the 20. I've kept marine aquariums and always thought the octopus was otherworldly. Amazing beings. Great show tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, there is a video, I think it was Vsauce. It was from a big channel. And he he got an octopus from like a pet store or something and he set up this obstacle course with these very difficult puzzles for this thing to solve to get to, I think he had some shrimp or whatever at the end. And this octopus was was unscrewing caps and and, and solving puzzles and sliding under. It was unbelievable. But I did, it's, it was Vsauce's video. I didn't want to. If, if I borrow even two frames of his, I'll get clobbered in the comments. David asked for 10. Love this one. The octopus is such a fascinating creature. Is there any evidence that they have any sentience? It's hard to define even what sentience is. You know, there's, there are plenty of scientists that believe most animals have some type of sentience. But it's just you know it's how far you wanted how you want to define that, and then it starts to get metaphysical and philosophical, where we're we're Homo sapiens, right? Where Homo is man, and sapien means knowledge or to know. But where our full name is Homo sapiens sapiens, which is we're men who know that we know. If you understand what I'm saying, so like my boys, my cats. They're sentient as you, they're aware of their surroundings and each other and who their friends are and you know what when it's time to play cookie chase. They so I consider that sentience, but is but is that what are they aware that they have the sentience? It's philosophical. I don't think it's scientific. But if octopus is actually sentient. Like I've, I, it's one of those things where, as I was researching it, I really want to learn more about this this creature. Like I knew they were smart, but I thought it was like, oh, dolphins are smart, octopus are smart. I didn't know that they had a more complex genome than a human being by by twenty percent. That's crazy. They don't have as many neurons as we do, but they have more neurons than most mammals. So, yeah, I want to learn more. There's Buzz Darkin and the Massives. Thank you for the $10.
Ooh, thank you for the tip. This human knows what's up. Fascinating theories presented in a way that only the only the way the Y files can deliver something for the masses to chew on. Well, thanks for that, Buzz. Ron, for two dollars, that's for Gino's pre-roll fund. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. I appreciate that, Ron. That's what we call enabling. Uh, there's Katie for 1999. Hey, Mr. AJ, thanks to you and the team for another great episode. Maggie had a terrible week. I'm sorry to hear that. And values your thought, values my thoughts. Shh. Any words of wisdom for someone going through a very rough time? Um, without knowing the specifics, it is something that I, I say over and over again. So for a while, when I was going through a rough time, I had a sign like right above my workstation that said this too shall pass which is that it, it you get through it and i've said this on this channel is when you're going through hell you keep going because it will pass if it, you know and i've been in, i've been in those situations and if you follow the channel and watched the videos you know that i've been open about um about my, my anxiety and, and depression that I've battled pretty much my entire life. Um, it's managed very well now that I'm older and I understand it, but it wasn't managed so great like in my 20s. And uh, what I've learned being so much older and, go, and having so many different experiences and different careers and, and all the different things that I've done is that things, when things are bad, after a little time passes, you'll look back and realize they weren't as bad as it felt. Even though when you're going through it, it's the, it's you're miserable. It's the worst thing ever. I and I, I'm telling you from experience, sitting there on my couch, whether I'm sobbing or I'm freaking out or whatever I'm going through, I know that that moment, this is the worst moment of my life. And then later on, I look back and it really wasn't. So you look back and things were really not as bad as they feel in the moment. So you've got to, you've got to just understand that and trust that, that it could be a couple of days, weeks, months. I don't know what's happening, you know, with her, but it will get better. But the same goes for the good times. You look back on the good times and, and life was never as amazing as it seemed at that moment. You know, time gives you a little bit of perspective and I think that's okay. You know, it's okay. That's, I don't think that's a negative thing to say that uh, today's the most amazing day ever. And then it, uh, two years later, you realize, oh, it was a good, it was fine. It's helpful to know that the, the, the peaks, the troughs, they're not as high and as low as they feel in the moment. That's what I'm getting at. Just keep going. You're going to be okay. And then I'm sorry to hear that you're going through something. Keep tuning in. That's why we're here. We're here to make you smile. Marcus Koch, Coke, thank you for the $5. I appreciate that. Very nice words in the chat for Katie. Thank you, Rock. McDanger, wise words. Point Nemo, remember yesterday was your hardest day. D Banks, yes, that's a good one. This too shall pass. Austin says, I needed those words. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad. I try to be as I, I'm as I on the after files is the most honest that I am in my life. This is the closest to me that anybody sees, except for you know, except for maybe Gino and Jen. But uh, as far as like telling the truth, I do it here. As I think it might be in one of my videos, or maybe it was in the podcast where I was talking about how when you're going through life, you really, it's, it's all such a performance because what, you know, what you're projecting is not, it, it's not really what's you're, you're just performing this, this character and depending on what's going through your, what you're going through in life or who's with you or how you're feeling, you're going to project different aspects and attributes of that character that you're performing, but what's going on inside your inner voice, your inner monologue could be very, very different than what you're presenting. So what I'm saying here is 
this performance is as close to the real me that's inside as I uh, really as I've ever done. And I honestly don't know why I do it. Marana, but it feels good. Marana Valdis, Valdis, thank you for $15. Great episode. Thanks for the cool science for reminding me just how incredibly amazing our universe is. Keep up the great work. I agree 100%. So fascinating. Katie gets a hug from 13,000 friends all at once. There you go. <laughs> Elegant pause. Let's be shallow. The hair is on point. <laughs> I appreciate that too. Like that's the thing. And like at, at my age, right, I start thinking about the testosterone shots. You know, because it, it would like to be, I, I'd like to be that, you know, that guy I was in my 30s. You know, with, I, I had like muscles and stuff. Jen, you remember I had muscles and stuff? But it's just, it gets so hard to maintain as you get older and older. So I think about getting the TRT, but I'm worried about the hair, man. I'm worried about the hair because a lot of guys go bald from that. Like it's too much tea. <laughs> don't do it, says Bob J. I'm not, I don't think I'm there yet. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to TMI you, but I, I've had that tested and I'm fine. Like I'm not really a candidate for that. HR muscles and stuff. Lisa, don't get testosterone shots. There, but there are men that it really, really helps them. Like it really, really helps them. Austin, you can get a wig. I guess that's true. Photo Fox saw, saw Palmetto. I, I got it all, man. Julie Hall goes Cialis. That's, I'm good, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm good. We have no, there's no issues in that department. It's more about like energy and, and, phys, and physically. Like when you get, every day is like harder to get out of bed and move around and things hurt and it's irritating. It's annoying. So if there's a shot that can make me feel a little bit, a little bit younger, I'm, I'm into it. Patrick Duncan, thank you for the end. Uh, thanks for another great episode. By the way, the end song, double check the captions. At one point it says, yeah, Gertie loves to dance too on the dance floor. You left your word out. Well, thanks, Patrick. We have to go fix that. Daniel says, I just go with the flow when it comes to aging. Just go out naturally. It's liberating. Sounds like it is. But it's... That's it's easier said than done. AJ knows after after ninety the energy tends to go down. Yeah, it does. Look, I'm very I'm very very lucky to, to be I don't to be as old as I am and to, and to be in the in in good health. Uh, OG Brickhouse Nutrition. Yep, I eat clean, but as you know, I do I, I do enjoy a cocktail. You got to live. Emery Snyder, you're sitting at the desk too much. And there's no doubt about that. There's no question about it. Like um, a couple of weeks ago, I had a session. Uh, it was an editing session for the Neanderthal episode where um, I, I, I edited. I worked all day, stayed up through the night editing. Through the following day and then the following night, I think I slept for about 90 minutes and then was working all day. So, so like 90 minutes of sleep across three days. It's a terrible, terrible thing to do. And it's very, it's very bad when, um, when you're older. And I, I like, I felt it straining my heart. I'm just checking the chat. Yeah. Good work chair is vital. Yeah. So, um, so for that session, I actually set a timer to just make myself just get up and walk around like every hour or so, set a timer every two hours to just, even though I wasn't sleeping, to just lay down on the, on the couch in my office and just, and just kind of deep breathe for a second. Cause it's just, it's just so bad to be so sedentary. Uh, especially cause I used to be so active. UGA Brodel for five. Did I see 45,000 people stuck around to the end of the song? I ain't mad. I was one of them. Great topic tonight. This was a new one for me. I'm glad to hear that, UGA. Yeah, about 45,000 people stayed for the song. It's catchy. Blaze recommending a stand-up desk. I have a stand-up desk at home. 
Don, Donnell's good mix, pace yourself, bud. Uh, I didn't have to work that hard. I, what I mean is that session, I didn't have to do it that way. The reason I did that is because I, we're trying to get just a little bit ahead here. And now we are. So, for example, we have an episode that's almost finished that I've, I, I've barely touched. So we're going to be... We're going to be maybe two or three weeks ahead soon. And then maybe Jenny and I can take a little a little vacation for her birthday. Chance, maybe good to see you. White Files movie, a mix between Moonlighting, AJ's Dave Addison, and Jenna's Maddie Hayes, and X-Files. Let's make this happen, Captain. I love the, I love the concept. I love the concept. In, in fact, what you're describing, I wrote pilot for a tv show um that that could fit into that description right yes yes maybe i'll you know what i'll do I'll, maybe i'll post that 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 script on um on patreon it's a great pilot i would love i was thinking the other day we should just shoot a couple scenes from it just for I fun think so i just wish we were younger <laughs> Yeah, well, it still works because because we could probably get that we could probably get that show made, not yeah. the show. We could pro we could probably get the pilot made. I think you'd right, but they wouldn't let us play play the characters we want to play. No, then it's not as fun. It's not. All right, maybe I'll make that script available for the um for the Patreon members. That's uh, it. It's one. It, one of the perks is is just the little stories like that, like um, the time where Russell Crowe almost came on the show. I posted that for Patreon members. May, may, I, if you guys care about that, I think I've, I might have even talked about it in the After Files. But if you if you want to hear that story, I'll just I'll grab it from the Patreon page. It's pretty funny. But uh, yeah, we almost had Russell Crowe. But he bailed on us. Mike D for 2001. Hoping tonight's episode has legs. A mix of even 10% science episodes with conspiracy ones would be great. That mix attracted me to the Wi Files great episode. I hope so too, Mike. You know, Victoria, who who basically runs things around here, came to the channel f for the science stuff. You know, that was that was when we were pulling we were, we were pulling like a lot of Joe Scott fans were coming over is what I noticed. But I just wanted to do more weird stuff. So I like the science stories, you know, and I like channels like Joe's. I'm a, I'm a sub of his, uh, and I've spoken to him and he's a super nice guy. Uh, but I, but I also am a huge Art Bell fan and those types of stories. And I just didn't feel like they were being covered well by really anyone. There was, there were either the, the videos that tell the conspiracy, the crazy story, like it's 100% true and that's the end. And it just sounds bonkers. Even if there's some truth in there, it's just bonkers. And then there's the other side, the the creators that will talk about a conspiracy theory, but they'll just condescend and insult you through the entire story. I see that one a lot. And those are annoying because I, because I enjoy the story. I don't need you to make me tell me I'm stupid for for th for believing something or even enjoying something but there was no channel that i found where i can get the storytelling with um sort of like the f fun storytelling that's true to the story the legend whatever it is and then after we kind of have fun with it then we reflect on the story and say all right what's true what's not what can we pull apart and uh, it's a format that I that I think works great for us, and it and it has attracted the perfect community. The, it's just attracted such a great audience because we've got like our the Wi Files audience are are like the the kooky people who who want the truth. That's that's you know because that's what I am. Uh, wi Files tag OMG the Wi Files wearing your merch and Gino reposted on Instagram. It's, 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 if one of you guys mods can post as me in the chat. Gino's Gina says he can. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, Blaze said that's what I like about your channel. Deidre Victoria looks so pretty tonight. Dirt head, exactly what the waffle is my favorite. 
Handy Bunny, life spontaneously develops somewhere. It makes more sense to me than it happens lots of places, maybe even on Earth or accidental panspermia from Mars. Certainly could be. I don't think I don't think it's, it's ever been settled that rock where the the microbes were seen. I I I don't think that's settled science yet. Whether it was uh, microbes or not, it certainly looks like it. And there have been other rocks found that have stuff that look like that. Hang on, I gotta get I gotta get ready for lexicon. Lexicon for 2112. A modern day goldfish lives in style, but you haven't tipped in quite a while. My money is all spent. You haven't tipped a cent. I gotta pay my rent, or I'll be living in a tent in Portland. Lexicon for 2112, another stellar episode with, with Panspermia and the Clintons talk. I was expecting to see a blue dress on the board behind you. Victoria and Jen smiles, light up the room as always. They certainly do. Finn bump to Gino. Thanks uh, to me and the team. Well, thanks, Lexicon. I mean, if 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 we're Joking about not joking about the Clintons, is that the same thing? Like, I, I, like I'm not really that afraid, but I'm not going to lie. There's a piece of me that's that's like, yeah, maybe there are there's certain people you could just ease, go easy on. Like, I, like, I'm annoyed at the FBI right now, and I'm pro I won't get into it too much because it, 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 it might sound political even though it's not. But I'm a little annoyed at the FBI. So we spent a lot of energy going after the CIA and exposing a lot of the nonsense that they've done over the years. And I'd like to do some of that with the FBI, who is who I have a problem with them. But there are certain folks that that connected there that you really that I would really be concerned about talking about. And that's a shame. That's not democracy. Tessa Burkham, Burkhamer, Burkham, T Tessa B for five. Thank you for the super sticker. Sarah for five. Sorry, Adrian. This one's for Jen. Who's your favorite true crime YouTube channel? Can't wait for the what files. One, mm. two. <laughs> That's it. Hang on. That's it. That's it. With your arms now. That's it. I can't. That's I can't. it. You're not going to believe me, but I, it was by accident because <laughs> my ping pong sound effect is over on that one. Oh, but uh, but but it was all blacked out the buttons, so I just went to go move it. One, two, <laughs> that's it. So uh, gotcha. that's just that's just uh, how we warm up in the office. All right, do you want to yes. you want to plug plug some channels? I do. I love Mike over at that chapter. I really like oh, his stuff. Oh, we love Mike. He's really good. Um, Shout out I, to another night client. Yes. I like uh, Bailey Sarian, who does Murder Mystery and Makeup Monday. So I really like hers. Um, but I've been like obsessively watching all of the reruns of the Forensic Files that's on YouTube right now because that kind of stuff is just. It's crazy to me that they'll be like, well, we found this tire print that was in the sand. And this is, you know, like 25 years ago that we took a cast of and we ran it through the National Tire Database and we found out it could only be this make like because you see stuff that on like on that on TV and you think, yeah, OK, whatever. Or that people don't really go through all of that stuff, but they kind of really do go through all of that stuff. So and, but anyway. and so and the question's relevant for Jen because the, the next channel we're launching is the What Files, and that's going to be true crime. And that's going to be hosted by Jennifer. And we have uh, the format, I think it's going to be a fun twist on uh, on some of the true crime stuff. Yes. All right, well, Jenny. So we're very excited. She's very excited. And there she goes. 
There's Zeb. That's Zeb is the uh, slightly above average fan of the Y Files. Uh, what up, Y Fam? Is your boy Z nasty up in her? Sorry about that. I'd like to plug the channel. Everyone show some love and buy merch from the shop. Snap a pic and tag Gino. Hashtag Y Files Nation. All right. Thanks for the plug, Zeb. Uh, Zeb, by the way, see the, you see that his avatar there? He's like Superman. Did you catch him in the Cheers opening? That was Zeb. Those were all pictures of... um. Uh, but folks sending in themselves wearing the merch. There's Lane for 20. Missed the chance to talk about cellular machinery being just that. Really, really small machinery. So we are robots. I like the way you think, Lane. BA saying, LOL, pay cash with no receipts. I got to see. What, what are you guys talking about in there? Uh, uh, Steven, will heckle, Hecklefish join Jen? I th he'll cameo. Um, but uh, but probably not. The thing is, uh, true crime is dark. Like I I've covered a cut. I've done a couple of true crime stories, but I've mostly stayed away from them. Um, the Circleville Letters might have been the last true crime story I did. Didn't perform super well. I thought it was a good episode. But the issue is, there's it's violence and it's sexual assaults, it's murders, it's bodies, it's it's all kinds of really harsh stuff. Um, the Y Files, even though we cover some dark subjects, the the point is at the end of the episode for you to feel good. Even if I end on a note that's kind of um, I don't know, dark is not the right word, but like if I'm going after the CIA or something. I still want you to feel good, and that's why th during the end credits and the plugs, the music is so upbeat. I want you to just smile when you're done with the episode. There are true crime channels and shows, and I watch those. I listen to those. You know, Jen and I will sit and binge on Netflix documentaries about Son of Sam and we, all, all that stuff. But when I'm done watching that, I, I don't feel awesome. <laughs> I don't, you know, it's kind of upsetting. So that's that's not what the Y Files is. I guess the What Files was just gonna make you feel crappy at the end of each episode. But that's what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? We're still gonna make it fun. We are. I'm super excited about it. Jen, super excited. And we're at 117 on your clock. That means Gina's story hour is coming up. We have a giveaway coming up soon as well. Uh, there's Jay Biddle. Hey, Jay, hope you could share link for Sagan video. I can't do it at this very moment, but that, um, if you're talking about the video that we used in the, in this episode, Josh cut that, that timeline. I don't know where he found that video, but, um, but I can certainly find out. You'll have to email me because I'm going to forget. Like I've already forgotten. There's beige, beige, there's a uh, big B for 10. Scientists have proved that our circadian rhythm coincides with a day's length on Mars, not Earth. I'd like to see um, some documentation on that, but that's very, very interesting. Very interesting. John Patton, $100? I want you to know I said human Thank you for all the dough Tipping As I'm sure you will find Always is a good time Ooh, ooh, ooh It's fun to tip the F-I-S-H It's fun to tip the F-I-S-H <laughs> I think I think Gino just insulted somebody in ASL. I'm not sure. <laughs> you have to rewind the tape on that. Uh, John, thanks. Please do an episode on the Travis Walden incident. We're probably going to cover him, but it's it's a hard that's a hard one because of what I was just talking about. Kind of kind of dark, kind of violent. Um, 
Maybe we've been I, his. We kiss, kick his name around. Uh, someone in the chat, in the regular chat, um, said that we were mentioned today on Jack Osborne's uh, um, podcast. I met Jack a few times. I, I I didn't catch that, and no one has sent that to us yet. So please uh, tag me or or send that over to Where's Gino or or uh, our Instagram. I'd love to see that. Yeah. All right. So. It is time for the giveaway. What is our word? Mm, panspermia. Yeah. All right. Panspermia. That looks right. All right. Here's how it works Ooh. if you're new here. You type panspermia in the comments. Spell it. If I misspelled it, you have to misspell it. Uh, pan, type panspermia in the comments. Uh, in a few minutes, we'll hit draw, and someone will be randomly picked. And the prize, this week's prize is amazing, isn't it, Victoria? What do they win? Oh, they win a $50 gift certificate to the store and come to Discord and put in a help desk ticket, and I'll, we'll get your info and get it right off to you. And Victoria will actually escort you as your personal shopper, right? Your very personal shopper, yes. I, I'll, I'll definitely help you spend that. Okay, so that's great. So you can get on, I guess, a video call with her, and she can walk you through the different products. And that's very generous of her. So, so that's Pants Bermia. Put that in the chat. <laughs> J-Red, donate to the poor people shaking my head. Look, if, if money's tight, don't super chat. And I've said that over and over again. I've also said if if you're financially able, you should support independent creators wherever you can and however you can. And not just me, all of them. So if there's a if there are channels like it, I, I don't know if Mike at that chapter has Patreon or whatever he has. He does. You should join it. If you're a subscriber of his, you should join it. And there's also plenty of ways to support us without paying a dime. Uh, if you go on to uh, iTunes and uh, give us a, a review or a like on uh, uh, the podcast or any of the different places, Spotify, all that really helps us out tremendously. Uh, we'll do a couple of super chats while we're waiting for Pants Bermia. Uh, Stu Farrell for £4.99. Glad to have you back. AJ and the gang. Good to be back. Good to be back, Stu. Matt Brown for 10. Give yourself credit for job well done. You are enriching my life and the lives of all the Wi-Fi's family. You're in my prayers every day. Well, thanks. It's very kind of you to say, Matt. Panspermia will not work, Kenneth. I'm sorry. You want to step out of the car, meow? There's H for five pound weekly reminder that we are not a cult. Or are <laughs> we? Or are we? And there's a Reddit thread that says that we are. Schizophrenia will not work. It's got to be panspermia. There's Bones905 for 10 Canadian. I can confirm Hecklefish has infiltrated Ubisoft's Toronto studio here in Canada. Got my Hecklefish talking plushie on my desk. All right. Ubisoft's Toronto studio. Didn't you guys have some drama there last year? I thought like one of the studios up there was evacuated for like a bomb threat or something, cr something crazy. I don't, I don't remember what it is. But Bones won't remember either because if he's a coder, then they're, they're, grinding, they're grinding his brain down to dust. There's Jessica for five Canadian. Venus needs some hydrogen comets. What do you think? She, what, what, why do you think she need, they need more hydrogen comets? Is she trying to terraform Venus? Sounds like it. All right. Well, Jessica's a big uh, Venus fan. There's Barra. Uh, wait a second. Hang on. That, <laughs> that's not the Mike Barra, is it? It is. Why is he Mike Barra 3? That's He lost a 3. Seems suspicious. Good it episode, does. little long, LOL. Well, Mike, I hope you got your dollar ninety nine worth. <laughs> Guys on at TV every, every day, and all right, West Green, 
Thank you for the five. Uh, go Chiefs. Can't wait to play the Super Bowl in your city. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. It would be fun to go. Never been to a Super Bowl. Deidre, thank you for the 10. Wish episodes were longer. Which is too high for COD. Mango Smurf panties will not work. That's not the word of the day. Uh, Gertie Squirtia will not work either. That's that's terrible. Trin Crispy Permia. There's cheapest big spender. Always good to see you. Next theme song for the After Files. Mr. Belvedere with some Bob Euchre wisdom. Need to make some Crab Cat and Gertie plushies. Love this channel. Thanks, cheapest. Those plushies are coming. We just need to figure it out. Uh, Camel's hermia, hernia will not work. <laughs> Pancakes is also incorrect. Dustin, Dustin asking, where is the music playing? I think it might be in your mind. I think you might be. I think it might be in your mind. You might be having a small seizure. No, I've got the game show. It's I got the game show music on behind us. That's all that is. I'm trying to keep it festive. There's uh, Benach Benach ninety five for six ninety six. Oh, Bannock just got out of hospital, and Jim Grimm and I couldn't wait to watch tonight. All right, thanks, Bannock, and say hi to Jim for me. Uh, Jeff Ward also voting for pancakes. Yeah, as soon as I saw that in the chat, my stomach growled. But I'm I, and shortly I'm going to go work on my philosopher's stone and. Jennifer can read some of these super chats while we do that. Dar L for five Canadian. We need the extra details with the Neanderthals. Kids are all in bed. Oh, I forgot that I told you that I, I would talk about that on the after files. Jim, what do I do? Uh, let's just say it. Uh... Well, uh, I'll, we'll, I'll, I'll give you one. I'll give you one. Because it's late, right? There's not a lot of kids. There's... The, the human beings, for example, are the only primate that you cannot tell visually if the female is ovulating. All other primates you can. So the males know when they can procreate. So the theory is that this became something uh, that we evolved this ability, women evolved this ability so they can choose the best mates. All right, the, the, the ladies are the choosers, right? Because men will just, what? <laughs> you know, and a couple of these and no, we need the women to decide. You can't have men in charge of that. Tyler, thank you for the two. Hit the like button, spreading spreading some plugs. Most mammals can. Yep, that's true. Yeah, so I, I, I probably could have prepared, like I know more of the things, but it's just... The mood right now, it just doesn't feel like I want to get into it's the, the, all the sexy, sexy stuff with the Neanderthals because it's all very violent and it's a lot of it is upsetting. And it wasn't sexy. Right. No. <laughs> no, no. Justin Watkins, 410. God, aliens or simulation. The only absolute truth is we are not in control. Also, I saw you had a picture of my lady love crazy airplane woman on your wall. Excellent choice. Who's that? That um, that MF girl. right there is not real. The picture you've got on oh, your oh, girl. Right. right, right. I'm glad that you guys saw that. Uh, there's Andrew Brooks for five pounds. I absolutely love your channel. Your attention detail is amazing, and I wish you every success. Much love from Andy B. UK. Thanks, Andy. I'm glad you're out there. Neon Noodle, Applebee's worst appetizer, panspermia. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have mine with the sauce on the side. Oh. oh. No. 
the Funky Chicken Records for 10. I'm so glad to be here tonight. Thanks for everything you do. Well, you're welcome to the Funky Chicken Records. Dead fish, panspermia, I hardly knew her. Here's Andrew for, uh, let's just call him Andrew K for 20. Tonight I learned about Mirepoix, thanks to the Wi Files. Well, that's cool that you learned about Mirepoix. Don't be shy with the onions. The secrets in the sauce, says Phil. Very nice. And there's Corey for what? What? $200. What the fish needs now A tips, sweet tips They're the only thing To bring a smile to my little lips Or buy a shirt A mug or a hat If it's easier just click the super chat. <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't want him to sing that one. What? No, it's, it's too late. I was. I was in the mood for some super freak. Of course, says leave tonight knowing you and the team are appreciated. I always thought octopus are aliens. Taste yummy. They they do. Let's hope aliens are pescatarian. Yeah, octopus it does taste yummy. Uh, plugs omertia will not work, lax motive. That's <laughs> but that's very funny. Aikido, I had a hernia. No, that's incorrect. Also, Victoria's hair looks so good. Oh my goodness. So on point. Isn't so it on, on point? point? Yes. We, we need a like a small desk fan in front of her when she's right. on. So it's just blowing. Just just Victoria blowing. <laughs> Holly Buckets for nine ninety nine. Hi, White House team. Wishing my fam in Minnesota a hello. Love you, Jossie and Emberlin. Hey, Jossie and Emberlin. Hello. Holly Buckets says hello. Hi, Holly Buckets. Yes, Jen's a beauty too. That's very nice. Oh, somebody asked earlier if I was a member of the Zipper Club. If you know what that is, you know what that is. And yes, I am. So there you go. Yeah, I I don't know what that is. Uh, <laughs> no, it's fine. But Jen, Jen, you want to read some super chats? I'll come back. We'll we'll do this drawing, and then we'll get to Gino Story Hour. Sure. I gotta have. I'm starving. Well, I offered to get you dinner, but you said no. So there you go. All right. Uh, that was hot. I mean, you get you get you get it, but you said no. <laughs> uh, let's see. Richard Bowser for four ninety nine. Knights Templar. Yes, yes. I'm very excited about the episode. I just don't like him reading it before because it ruins the next week. I feel that's just my opinion. Joshua Spore for two dollars. Thank you, Joshua, so much. Hello again from Northern Minnesota. Well, hello to you too, sir. I like your avatar. I guess you're a photographer. Very cool. Uh, Carrie Bear for $9.99. Oh, that's cute. Carrie Bear, is that your real name? <laughs> that's very cute. For $9.99, please send a shout out to my son, Waylon. We love you guys and watch every week. Bestest YouTube channel ever. Hello, Waylon. Everybody say hi to Waylon. Waylon! Wellen! Woo! Uh, Yellow Umbrella Homebrew, the official uh, umbrella homebrew of the Y Files for $2. <laughs> Crab Cat IPA, I could make that happen. Ooh. Yellow, there's a lot of moving parts to that. So I know you could probably make it happen as uh, uh, brewing it, but can you make it happen where it could be sold uh, through a, a, a website? Uh, you know, there's a lot of regulations on that. So if you can, please just DM me at where's underscore Gino or uh, go to our Instagram page and reach out and we'll uh, have a little chat. Yes. Because I drink that. Very cool. Thank you, Yellow Umbrella Homebrew. 
Uh, Lulu Lacrima for $20. Your hard work and levity bring lots of people joy. Bring people lots of joy. Know that you are appreciated. Let's make Crab Cat Whiskey. Shout out to my guy, Izzy. Hello, Izzy. And thank you, Lulu. We appreciate that greatly. And we appreciate you. Seriously, you guys, you know, we, we say this all the time, but um, what happens here on the After Files and with our patrons, um, it really keeps the channel going and allows us to continue to do this. So we appreciate you guys more than we could ever say, honestly. So thank you. Shadow for $5. Did you see the chandelier UFO? Um, are you talking about the one that was going over the military base that just looked like a crazy, like, I'm guessing it's like the jellyfish, you jellyfish one. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've had lots of internal discussions on what it actually is. So we're not sure, but we, we, we did see it and we have talked about it. A uh, new phase four T for $27. Arizona Distillery does a great rye. Well, that's good to know. We'll have to write that down. Gino's writing it down right now. Yeah, I, again, um, it, the creation is the easy part. It's the sales that's the hard part. Right. Right. So we want to get it out to everyone. But if we make it and we're just showing it to you every night on, on the after files and, and having a good time on our, on our own, that's, you know, that's no fun for anyone. And we can't even just make them and give them away either because we can't send them in the mail. Right. So, um, so th there are some hurdles. We really want to, we really want to do it. So, um, certainly, uh, with everyone that's on here, if anyone, uh, um, has some, some purview into the sales aspect of it, we're all ears. One, two, that's it. Oh my gosh. Deborah Angelic and the Universal Energies for $20. Well, thank you, Deborah. No comments, just here's $20. That is angelic and gives universal energy. And we thank you for that. Uh, Carlos Montague for $9.99. Whiskey and Secrets. Not much better than that, right? I mean, I don't drink whiskey, but it does sound fun, doesn't it? It does sound fun. <laughs> yes. Paul F for $10. I don't know about panspermia, but you, sir, and the rest of the Y Files crew are good eggs. Well, thank you, Paul. You're a good egg, too. We're glad you're here. Um, and that's why we like topics like this, is because it just kind of opens a discussion. Because it is a really interesting conversation, right? Like, so panspermia wasn't a thing, let's just say. So then how did life spontaneously come about if it just birthed itself in the primordial soup? How did that happen? It's a, an interesting intellectual experiment. And to go back to the uh, jellyfish U, uh, UAP that we're seeing, you know, we're looking at cephalopods and talking about uh, whether or not they're alien. Well, it looks like uh, one of them that, that evolved is up in the air. He could do whatever he wants in the air, on the water. They said it, uh, it went on the water for a little while and came back up. You know, we're talking about the evolution here. Right. I was just scanning through the script. Why they do those super chats? <laughs> so do that for just one more minute. Okay. Uh, Smurf dance for ten dollars. Thank you, thank oh, you, Smurf dance. I, I saw that, Victoria. Do a Smurf Not, yet. <laughs> Not yet. Not uh, yet. So thank you, Smurf dance. Just a tenner right there. Bad vegan for five dollars. Keep doing what you're doing, but please know the fans are will be here for shorter or fewer episodes too. Get some sleep and don't burn yourself out. Oh, um, thank you, Bad Vegan. Love to hear that. We appreciate that very, very much. It's, uh, but we're getting there. We're getting there. I think we might be like three weeks ahead after mid next week. So that's excellent. Uh, 
Shivan Ashley for $20. Hello from Mount Shasta, California. I'm <gasps> still keeping my fingers crossed for a Bigfoot video someday. One can dream. Well, dream no more, Ms. Ashley, because we do have a Bigfoot episode coming up. Oh. I, oh, I believe oh. it's the first week of March, but don't quote me on that, but it will be in March. So very exciting. Very exciting. Um, sir, 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 is a bit business for five serious <laughs> business, probably is what that's supposed to be for five dollars. Hecklefish, half a vison, do eat. Oh, I like that. We could call it heckle vison. See, that's fun. Um, thank you for that, Johnny oh, Shabazz. Hang on, I gotta, I gotta find it. There it is. Hang on. This one? Yeah. That's a good name. Heckelweizen, I think that's great. Mm -hmm. So. Are we ready to pick or what? We got 1,400 go folks. Go for Whoa. it. All right. Get your panspermias in. And if... um. If one of the producers can do me a favor and unstar everything we've gotten to so far. You got it, Jim. It's done. Oh, the espresso machine is, was the greatest idea ever. All right, here we go. Uh, Alex, Hannah, Craig, Mike, Kay, Ash, Lana, Mel, Rap, Jim, Matthew, uh, Chef, Stephen, Anna, BJ, AB, Jesse, Paul, even Stephen, John, Stubby or Stubby or Stubby. Or Stubby. Yay! John Stubby is the winner. So what does John Stubby have to do to claim his date with Victoria? Please come to Discord and put in a help desk ticket and we'll get your $50 gift certificate to the Wi-Fi store right away. Nice. Nice. Congratulations, John. And um where he go? Tell me something I don't know. Where Gino oh shit, where he go? Tell me something I don't know. Where's Gino oh shit, where he go? All right, Gino story hour, here we go. This is uh, going to be a good one T tonight. Uh, we're uh, talking about maybe an internet, uh, interdimensional being, maybe an, an alien, maybe uh, a vagrant. We don't know. Could even be a ghost. We don't know. We don't know. It's up to you to decide. Oh, I thought you were starting it, AJ. Am I starting it? I'm happy to do it. You ready? Ready for it? Ready for it? Let's go. Uh, I don't know. Tonight on Gino's Story Hour, for your consideration, we have the story of Sam the Sandown Clown. The names in this story have been changed to protect the innocent. This story takes place on the Isle of Wight in England, which is a popular vacation destination, but has always been a hotbed for unusual activity. The 1970s were no exception for extraterrestrial encounters. In fact, in 1973, the Isle of Wight would get what would be the strangest story of all, a creepy seven foot tall, no neck clown alien with three fingers and three toes on each foot. All of the information we have about this cosmic clown came from a single article titled Ghost or Spaceman, which can be found in the Bufora Journal, a chronicle of UFO activity in the UK. It was June 2nd, 1973, when seven-year-old Faye approached her father, known only to us as Mr. Y, and she was completely terrified. She had to tell him something that happened a few weeks earlier, but she was afraid he wouldn't believe her. Like every father's nightmare, he could tell just from her face how scared she was, and once she began to tell the story, he had no idea how to reassure his daughter that everything would be okay. Faye's adventure began as she was outside playing with her buddy, a neighborhood boy. Let's call him Buddy. These questionably unsupervised kids start to hear a strange, siren-like sound. There's 
Adults around, but none of them seem to react to it. Faye and Buddy start following the noise. It seems almost like a warped ambulance siren. The children's curiosity lure them like the Pied Piper down the far side of the Sandown golf course to a swampy area. Well, that's red flag number one. As they get closer to the origin of the sound, they come across a long wooden footbridge running over a narrow creek. Like a scene out of Stand By Me, but instead of a train coming from the other side, Faye sees something worse, way worse. A three-fingered blue-gloved hand appeared from under the bridge and a strange figure emerged, waving them to come closer. Red flag number two. The humanoid looked like a cross between a clown, a scarecrow, and a marionette. The original article described the creature as nearly seven feet tall with no neck. His head appeared to be wedged straight onto his shoulders. He wore a yellow pointed hat, which interlocked with a red collar of a green tunic. A round black knob was affixed to the top of his hat with a wooden-like antenna attached to either side. His face had triangular eyes, a brown square nose and motionless yellow lips. Other round markings were on his paper white cheeks and a fringe of red hair fell onto his forehead. Paper slats protruded from his sleeves and below his tattered white trousers. It had no shoes on and they noticed it only had three toes as well. As far as space style goes, we're gonna give him a C for creepy. This is where I would have taken off at top speed. However, it's years before the release of Stephen King's It before people had a deathly fear of clowns. The creature climbed on top of the bridge with a book in its hands, but it fumbles the book into the water. It hops into the creek cannonball style and starts splashing around in a desperate attempt to save the book. Once out of the creek, the tall creature heads towards what Faye described as a windowless metal hut, but it didn't walk. It hopped, with its knees touching its chest awkwardly like a possessed Easter bunny. Quickly, the creature reappears carrying a black knob microphone with a white flex cord attached. And then the noise that originally caught their attention starts again, almost like a mechanical wailing. Red flag number three. Buddy's ready to run away, but it's almost like the clown being realizes he's been going about this the wrong way. The sound starts to change. It becomes a voice, a man's voice that sounds friendly and inviting. He asks, hello, are you still there? And it sounds like the voice is right next to them. This soothing voice put the children slightly at ease. The clown starts writing in the book that he fumbled into the water. He wrote in a non-linear fashion, but he pointed to each word as Faye read aloud. Hello, and I am all colors, Sam. Now we have to remember this is the early 1970s. There's no concept of stranger danger. You listen to adults, even if they were three-toed, scarecrow-looking clowns that lived in a metal hut with no windows. Once they got closer to Sam, they noticed that he could speak in a slightly garbled voice without a microphone. His mouth and lips just don't move. It's as if he's speaking through a mask like Bane from Batman. Sam invites them into his hut, but there's no door. The entrance is a small flap that they have to all crawl into one at a time. What number red flag are we on? Number four? That's the fourth one. The kids are amazed at what they see. The interior space appeared far larger than the hut's outward dimensions suggested. It's like they crawled into the TARDIS. This spacious, one-bedroom loft hut had a second level with a metallic floor. The walls and curved ceiling were covered in a textured blue-green wallpaper with an intricate pattern that resembled a panel of glowing LED-like meters, dials, and undecipherable symbols. In the center sat a humming electric heater emitting a warmth that enveloped the whole room. In stark contrast to the other technology they were witnessing, they noticed against the walls were various pieces of simple wooden furniture. Once inside, like any well-mannered clown, Sam takes off his pointy hat, revealing a tuft of reddish-brown hair. His completely round ears were a bright white sticking out from under his mask. Faye needs answers, so she starts with an easy question. Why are your clothes all ripped? And he replied, it's because I only had one set. Faye, doing her best Columbo impression, looks into his motionless yellow eyes and asks, are you really a man? But <coughs> Sam didn't get mad. He just laughed and said, no. Red flag number five. Then believing they figured it out, Faye asks, so you're a ghost. Now Sam doesn't give a flat out no this time. Instead he says, well, not really, but I am in an odd sort of way. Faye, unfazed, says, what are you? He says coyly, you know, but they don't know. Sam reveals there are others like him and they have a camp on the mainland. 
He says that he's terrified of people and that if he was ever attacked, he wouldn't fight back. A ghost clown that dabbles in pacifism? Good to know, because once word gets out, you know that there's gonna be a good old fashioned torch wielding clown burning mob knocking on that flap of his hut. Faye asks about what he eats and drinks. Sam reassures the children that he has plenty of fresh water from the local river that he purifies, although he doesn't elaborate on the process. He brings out a big bowl of berries that he mentioned that he forged for earlier. At this point, Sam goes full clown. He stuck a berry in his ear. He violently jerked his head forward. The berry reappeared in one of his deformed eye sockets, bouncing back and forth. Then with another violent jerk, the berry lands at his mouth slip. These kids must be colorblind because I'm losing track of how many red flags we got. I think we're up to number six. <laughs> the author of the original article does make this note. A possible explanation could be that he was wearing some kind of protective mask and analyzing the berry to check if it wasn't poisonous. But I like to think it was just a cool party trick. After kicking it for over a half an hour with Sam, these kids finally start to wise up and they're ready to get out of Dodge. Sam's doing the whole, what are you leaving for? You just got here thing. But Faye and Buddy, they're already turtle crawling out the flap. They run back across the bridge and thankfully, no blue gloved buds of Sam emerge from underneath it. While booking it back home, they see a golfer on the ninth hole and they hysterically explain to him they've just seen a ghost. But the guy just laughs at them, which made Faye more hesitant to tell anyone else immediately. A few weeks pass and Faye finally tells her dad about the seven foot clown ghost that eats berries through his eyes. Typically, a parent would chalk this up to a child's wild imagination, but Mr. Y, he's had his own experiences previously. Once, he saw an aerial UFO that was witnessed by him and a friend, and another time he saw a submerged USO that he was followed by yellow lights. Mr. Y adds, I get the impression that Faye was somehow taken into a bubble of alien reality created by this strange personage. He told him that he'd just made the hut. Also, Faye said, while they were talking to this ghost, there were two workmen nearby who were repairing a post. They paid no attention to this weird charade, as though they couldn't hear it or see it. Faye's father, Mr. Y, also followed up by talking to Buddy, who maintained the same story. So let's unpack this crazy story. No traces of Sam the Sandown Clown or his hut have ever been found, nor has a copycat story of Sam ever been told. So what was Sam, and what was the sound that he made? We know that certain frequencies can only be heard by children. Could Sam have had access to that information and used it to lure the children to his windowless hut? Some have guessed that he was a time traveler and his hut was a time machine. Most people land in the group that think Sam was some kind of space alien, as three fingers and toes would be pretty hard to fake. Was his hut a spaceship? Was Sam an interdimensional being similar to a spirit? According to Sam himself, he was all colors and he was not quite a ghost. This could allude to Sam being a hologram or phasing through dimensions. Or maybe Sam is just a local vagrant dressed in clothes that he swiped off of the local scarecrow. His furniture is made up of wood. He's eating berries that he found and mentions that he has a camp of others like him. Regardless of the answer, I'm glad that we don't have a bunch of Sams running around pushing their hallucinogenic berries on the neighborhood kids who don't have enough common sense not to hang around with a strange clown in his metal hut down by the river. And that's the story of Sam the Sandown Clown. Was he a ghost? Was he an alien? Was he an interdimensional being? I'll let you decide. Hi, I'm Clowns. I'm a professional clown. And I'm here today to talk about something that often goes unnoticed, yet impacts many lives in a profound way. I'm talking about clown hate. You know, clowns have been an integral part of our culture bringing joy and laughter and bits of whimsy into our lives. From circuses to birthday parties, they have been symbols of happiness and creativity. Yet in recent times, they become targets of ridicule and fear, an unfair representation of their true purpose. Why would we hate what is meant to bring us joy? Is it the clown's exaggerated features, their colorful attire, or simply a misunderstanding of their art. And make no mistake about it, a clown is an artist. They are a performer. And above all, they're human beings that deserve respect and kindness, just like everyone else. So let's work together and change the perspective. Let's replace clown fear and clown hate 
with understanding and appreciation. <laughs> Let's spread love and positivity in the name of clowns. For a world filled with laughter is surely a world filled with joy. My name's Clownless, and I approve this message. <laughs> Clownvis. We love us some Clownvis. Is there more? Tell me something. I don't know. Where's Gino? Oh shit, where'd he go? Tell me something. I don't know. Where's Gino? Oh shit, where'd he go? Gino Rodica. Talking cryptids and Sasquatch. Getting freaky on the scene while aliens watch. Gino knows how to have some fun. Talking about Area 51. Might hear about a Bigfoot or maybe a ghost. But one thing's for sure, Gino knows the most. So sit back and listen while Gino chats. And one more thing. Where's Gino at? Tell me something. I don't know. Where's Gino? Oh shit, where'd he go? Tell me something. I don't know. Where's Gino? Oh shit, where'd he go? <laughs> The That's great clown vest, everybody. That's fantastic. The great clown vest. We love clown vest. He didn't tell me that we're, that we're going to get a, a cameo from clown vest. That's awesome, Gino. Big, big thank you to clown vest. He's a big fan of the uh, show as well. He's uh, been uh, friends of ours for, for years. And uh, if um, you like that, go check out at clown vest on all the socials. Uh, he does live uh, song singing, uh, you know, like uh, karaoke Mondays and Fridays. I think Mondays and Fridays. Check him out. That's uh, awesome. Clownvis, Clownvis is awesome. He's a lot of fun. Uh, a couple of people in the chat knew who Clownvis was, right? Yeah. Well, well Clownvis uh, is on, you know, works with the um, Gathering the Juggalos. He's, you know, he does the whole clown circuit is there a clown circuit i think there's a clown circuit but um uh, again he's pretty well known uh, among the the juggalos and they're they're a, a large cult themselves look if you're down with the juggalos all right well that was a a weird story that was a good one though might that be my favorite awesome. you know story so a couple of people in the chat asking so yeah we're on the on the backstage channel, all Gino story hours will be posted. Just the videos themselves, without our faces and comments. If you want to, uh, if you want to check out the stories again, those will be on the backstage channel. All right, Columbus, there he goes. That's so fun. I love that he sang a version of the song. That's awesome. That was awesome. Very cool. We need a juggalo uh, hecklefish plush, plushie. <laughs> uh, Nathan asked, was Clownvest at Skankfest this year? He was, wasn't he? Uh, no, a killer, killer, uh, 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 killer J was uh, from um, uh, ICP. ICP. Uh, Violent J, sorry, Violent J, not Killer J. I, I'm mixing up Killer Mike and, and Violent J. V uh, Violent J, J was there. All right, let's talk about the lost history of the Knights Templar. Oh. All right. Uh, what time is it? Is it too late to start this? I mean, you've been on for almost two hours, so. Let's see what the, what, what does the chat want to do? So here's the thing, guys. We can, I can tell you the, I can tell you the lost history of the Knights Templar, or I can read your super chats, but I'm not going to be able to get to both. What I'll do is, um, I'll get do some super chats in between the scenes. But this read is probably going to take about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Maybe a little longer because I'm kind of cold reading it. What does chat say? It says Templar. All right. Um, the video is at 365,000 right now, by the way. And where is that rank? One of 10. All right. Uh, one thing before you start, uh, a couple people have asked in the chat, what shirt am I wearing? It is uh, one of our merch shirts available in the store, Gino Erotica. Gino, hang on a second now. <laughs> All right, there's John Stubby. We got, uh, so we've got a Gino Erotica shirt in there. Mm -hmm. um, there's a Gino section. 
Oh, that well, it's got to be a geno, a whole geno section. Oh, so, all right. So we get geno, uh, geno erotica coffee mugs at shopthewildfiles.com. Okay, very good, very good. All right, I'll give you guys a break, and we'll and we'll do some Templars. I don't know what we're in for. But we'll, but we'll, uh, we'll, as as Mike would say in that chapter. Let's give it a go. We'll give it a go. All right, lost history of the Knights Templar. I don't have the author's name here. <clears throat> oh, so before I do this, last time I read a script out loud, I was do. I got an email from a guy who said, I, I saw what you're doing in your live stream. I've been there. Got to go easy on the stuff. I didn't know what he meant. Like I, I, I had a little bourbon, but I wasn't really drunk. So I wrote him back. I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, you ca I saw you, you kept dipping down and sniffing and then uh, heavy breathing. He thought I was like doing rails <laughs> in between the chapters. That's not what I'm doing. I'm clearing my throat. <clears throat> so it's not in the microphone and I take a couple of deep breaths so I can relax and get into the copy. So, uh, so no, there, there are not lines of Coke here, but if anyone's in the area, no, 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 I'm just kidding. Let's talk about the lost history of the Knights Templar. Scene one, the hook. Legends of the Knights Templar are filled with murder, mystery, and buried treasure. The widely accepted narrative depicts them as humble Catholic military group that was betrayed and ultimately destroyed. But the story within the story involves a secret powerful enough to rewrite history and change the world. The Knights Templar were covert guardians of priceless esoteric wisdom, alchemical texts, and ancient technology. You see, the Templars weren't really Catholic warrior monks. In fact, they weren't really Catholic at all. They were Gnostic. And their true purpose wasn't protecting people. That was their cover story. Their purpose was treasure hunting. Let me put the chat over here so I can see what you guys are saying. I think it's. I think we might, we might be off to a pretty good start. All right, there's some names coming here I might get wrong. I apologize in advance, but let's go. Scene two. The real story of the Knights Templar is one only the current Grand Masters know. For centuries now, the truth has been closely guarded, shrouded in secrecy and speculation. Lucky for us, one of the Grand Masters, a man named Timothy Hogan, is ready and willing to share this long-held secret with the world. And the truth is far more interesting than the tales. According to Hogan, the story of the Knights Templar begins many years before their official organization in 1118. It begins in Constantinople, now Istanbul, with a secret Gnostic group called the Brothers of the East. They came in contact with Hugh de Pans, who had become the first Grand Master of the Knights Templar. Pans told them that eight other Pans told them and eight other men about an ancient primordial civilization that thrived thousands of years ago. This civilization had treasure and technology that the people in the Dark Ages could only dream of. They had free energy, abundant food, wealth, gold, long distance communication, levitation, and the power of miraculous healing. And then they were all destroyed in a period known as the Younger Dryas. That ancient civilization was Atlantis. But in Templar tradition, Atlantis wasn't just a city or an island. It was a global civilization with, with cities scattered around the world. The cities were connected using highly advanced travel technology. Hudipians was technically Catholic, as most of Europe was. But he had family members that were of the Sufi Islamic faith which is the more mystical side of Islam. So for Hugh de Pians, mystical treasure and ancient artifacts were right up his alley. When the Brothers of the East offered them an assignment to find the ancient artifacts and bring them back to Europe for safekeeping, Hugh and the eight other men readily agreed. At first, they didn't find much. 
But years later, when the Crusades were well underway, the Knights organized themselves into an official order. Then they headed to one of the key ancient locations, Jerusalem. They had gotten word that the Temple Mount might be more than just the location of King Solomon's temple. The Knights wanted to find the treasure before anyone else did. You see, it wasn't just the Knights that knew about Atlantis. Jewish and Muslim groups were searching too. So when they arrived in the Holy Land, the Knights set up camp and immediately began to dig. The Knights dug and dug, playing the part of courageous warrior monks when necessary, until finally they literally struck gold. I like it. Scene three. <clears throat> the knights found a large box made of acacia wood and gold. They found the legendary Ark of the Covenant. Then they found five more. Year after year, more treasures emerged from the depths of the earth. They found the Spear of Destiny, the Holy Grail, the Emerald Tablet, and pages and pages of esoteric wisdom. They learned that the arcs were used in conjunction with the world's pyramids to create limitless electricity, similar to what Nikola Tesla tried doing with his towers. One of the arcs even had the right dimensions to fit within the sarcophagus inside the king's chamber in the Great Pyramid. The knights discovered that the pyramids were built for one essential purpose, to store the arcs. And the arcs, they were built to store the manna. In the Bible, manna was a food source, a bread that appeared to the Israelites in the wilderness. But according to Templar tradition, manna was a powerful substance in the bread. The Israelites and the Atlanteans before them extracted manna from plant and animal matter and turned it into monatomic white powder. This manna acted as a superconductor and powered the arcs that rested inside the pyramid, providing free and sustainable energy to the thriving civilization. They learned these alchemical secrets from none other than the Emerald Tablet. It gave detailed instructions on how to extract this manna from animal bones, as well as how to use it for healing purposes. Some of these ancient texts even talked about creating manna from gold. Specifically, they spoke of a non-human race that enslaved humanity to mine gold and convert it into a powder used for healing and levitation. Yes, you heard that right. The Templars knew about the Anunnaki. And it wasn't just the Atlanteans or Israelites that knew about mana. Sumerian texts spoke about an alchemical science called graal, strikingly similar to the wor word grail. This technology used a substance called shimana, to help the Anunnaki gods, to help the Anunnaki gods power their flying craft. In Vedic, Hindu, and Jain texts, this substance was called vimana, again used to power flying crafts. Polynesian cultures believe mana is a force of nature anyone can extract. Buddhist traditions call it mani. Though the words vary slightly in all these cultures, the definition and use is the same. Mana is an incredibly powerful substance that allows humanity to tap into something bigger than ourselves. Mana is still significant in some Templar orders today. Timothy Hogan himself has extracted mana. He's even ingested it. But not everything the Knights found was Atlantean. Some of it was from just a thousand years before, during the time of Jesus. Most of it referred to the true history of Christianity which alone was enough to shake the foundation of the Catholic Church. But no historical document compared to the shock of what they discovered next. The Knights found the bones of Mary Magdalene. They found the bones of John the Baptist and Jesus himself. Oh, they also found the children Mary had with both of them. Uh, Michael Cannon, no, why is this not an episode? So, Michael, if you're just joining, this is an episode. This is a rough draft of a script um, that this is what, when when we get uh, subscri uh, scripts submitted by the writers, they start out like this, kind of raw, although this is very well written and fun. And then I take, then I go through it and I do some additional research. I make it sound more like me. 
Um, and we put in some jokes for Hecklefish because it, he has a contract. So that's so this is going to be an episode. You're just seeing what behind the scenes is like. Uh, Sybil, not a fan of that last part. I know Sybil is is a uh, is a woman of faith, and I understand that. But hang in there. That ending, though, wow. Woo. Scene four, philosophical treasures. Blasphemy wouldn't even begin to describe what the knights found. And in order to keep these treasures safe from being immediately destroyed, they needed to keep them from falling into the wrong hands, specifically the Pope's hands. The Templars knew that the bones of the supposed resurrected Savior were enough to destroy Christianity, and with it, the Catholic Church. But to rub salt in an already gaping wound, the Templars found something potentially even more threatening to the Church, an alternate belief system. The Templars weren't exactly Christian, not in the strictest sense, but the majority of Europe was, and more importantly, their king and employer were. Spreading information contrary to the teachings of the Catholic Church was not only heresy, it was a death sentence. Remember, this was all happening at the time of the Crusades, when people were literally dying because of their beliefs. The Templars couldn't speak about their findings, but they couldn't ignore them either. So instead, they studied them. Some of the ancient wisdom included blasphemous ideas like the divine feminine, reincarnation, heaven as a state of mind, and an, innate, and an innate connection to the creator. Over time, these ideas became just as precious to the Templars as the physical treasures and created the basis for their entire belief system. The Knights maintained their appearance as devout Catholics, probably to avoid beheadings, but secretly they'd become Christian Gnostics. Gnosticism stems from the Greek word gnosis, which means knowledge or wisdom. The basic premise is that spirituality, that spirituality can be found within, eliminating the need for an outside institution. One of the earliest Templar documents mentions God-given rights, which at the time was enough for excommunication. Only the Roman church could give someone rights. Any alternative was bad for business. And instead of worse... And instead of worshiping Jesus, the Knights Templar idolized John the Baptist, who they believed initiated Jesus into Gnosticism in the Great Pyramid. To the Templars, Jesus represented a Christos, a universal consciousness that anyone could access, similar to the Buddha. They learned that being born again didn't refer to baptism. It referred to reincarnation, when someone would literally be born again. With the bones of Jesus, ancient scriptures, and artifacts from an ancient civilization, the Templars had plenty of evidence to back up their beliefs and fight the powerful Catholic Church, but they knew it yet wasn't time. So, after years of digging, these early knights returned to Europe with the majority of the treasures and knowledge and hid it. For 200 years, the knights not only grew, they thrived. Their number increased from a handful of soldiers to tens of thousands of men and women. The Catholic Church and Christian lords all over Europe gave them money, land, and power to help with their chivalric cause. The Templars created cathedrals, power structures, even the first banking system. Individually, the knights were poor, having to give up their wealth and status to join, but at but as a group, they became the first multinational corporation. First multinational corporation. The treasures and knowledge passed from one generation to the next, with each grand master responsible for their safekeeping. And for those few hundred years, the Knights Templar were extremely successful at distracting the church from their true esoteric purpose, a little too successful. As the organization's wealth and independence grew, so did the target on their backs. When it got to a point where even the king owed them money, he and Pope Clement V decided something needed to be done. The Templars had gone from humble defenders of Christianity to a serious power threat. And like so many powerful, powerful rulers of today, King Philip the Fair didn't tolerate threats. And no, calling Philip the Fair wasn't irony. Fair referred to his complexion, not his ethics. 
On Friday the 13th, 1307, 100 Templars, including the Grand Master Jacques de Molay, were rounded up. They were threatened and tortured to gain access to their knowledge and wealth. This attempt failed. After making false confessions, they were sentenced to execution for heresy and fraud. Grandmaster Malay burned at the stake with his fellow knights. But not before enacting a small token of revenge. As he slowly burned to death, Malay issued a curse to the Pope and the King of France, promising them that they would soon meet the same fate. In less than a year, both King Philip and the Pope met sudden tragic deaths. France had now lost its king and its pope, and all of Europe had lost their beloved knights, or so it seemed. The night before their execution, the Templars' entire fleet disappeared into the darkness, along with the ancient Atlantean artifacts, treasures, and secret documents. Disbanded but not destroyed, in hiding but not in prison, the Templars formed splinter groups around the world, trying their best to keep their mission alive. Making their identity and beliefs public wasn't an option, so they did the next best thing. They immortalized themselves in architecture. I'm just checking the chat. I'm, li I'm, liking, the, I'm liking the episode. Sounds like an Assassin's Creed story. It needs more words, says Shaw. Look, this is the rough draft. And by the way, there's spoilers in here, so. Bad vegan, this is going to be a great effing episode. I think so, too. Because this is, this is the raw stuff. This is the, this is the you know, this is the raw materials. Uh, amphibious one. Yeah, that's a good read. Yeah, I'm enjoying it too. All right. You ready for scene five? Scene five, architecture and evidence. Evidence of the Knights Templar can be found all over the world. After they disbanded, they were determined to keep their knowledge and traditions alive, so they created alias groups to stay under the radar. In Scotland, they became Freemasons. Portugal, they were known as the Knights of Christ. In Germany, they created Rosicrucianism. There's also evidence of the Knights in the early Americas. Nova Scotia has the legendary Oak Island, with buried Templar treasure and deadly curses. An indigenous tribe in Panama, known as the White Indians of Darien, have white skin and Caucasian features. They're speculated to be the descendants of the first Templars in the Americas. In early Europe, Templars were the first Vikings. Even the first pirates were Templar splinter groups, targeting the nations that attacked them. The famous skull and crossbone symbol, the Jolly Roger, that flag was first flown by the Templars' naval fleet as a way to scare their enemies before battle. One of the more famous Templar symbols is the Red Cross with white background. Another obvious one is the depiction of the knights on a horse, like this statue in London. You can't see it. It's just a script. Both of which can be found in multiple cathedrals and chapels all across Europe. If you're a fan of the Da Vinci Code, you may remember Roslyn Chapel in Scotland, said to have been built by the Templars themselves. Pagan and Templar symbols cover every inch of that chapel. Some, like this carving of a knight on horseback, are obvious. And this is a gravestone for, for William St. Clair, in the lower part of Roslyn Chapel, clearly marked as a knight Templar. But it's not just crosses and horses that the Templars engraved on their architecture. There are much more subtle clues relating to some of their Gnostic and sometimes pagan beliefs. Some carvings have puzzled, some carvings have puzzled historians for centuries. Here's a picture of Lucifer hanging upside down. I have links to it, but uh, it'll ruin the flow. Sculptures of angels in strange positions are common in Rosalind Chapel and are an important rite in Freemasonry. But Freemasonry wasn't supposed to have started until 1717. Rosalind Chapel was built in 1446. There's also these. There are over 100 of these little green men scattered around Rosalind Chapel. They're pagan symbols thought to originate from ancient Celtics. 
Paganism simply refers to anything that isn't Christian, Islam, or Jewish in nature. Why would there be hundreds of non-Christian symbols in a Catholic church unless they were placed there as a secret message? Some of the more interesting carvings are of plants that Europeans never should have known about. This is a picture of corn over one of the windows in Roslyn Chapel. And here's one of what some believe is trillium. But corn and trillium are native to North America, and Roslyn Chapel was built almost 50 years before Columbus sailed to the New World. How would Templars know what those plants look like? Unless they were there first. Templar legend suggests that a man named Sir Henry St. Clair, grandfather of the builder of Roslyn Chapel, was not only a Templar, but was among the first Europeans to visit the New World. Not only that, but Columbus himself was associated with the Knights, which some think is how he got the maps for his trip to the New World in the first place. Columbus gets hailed as a leader in the discovery, but really he was just a follower, a sheep, one might say. So if Templars were the first Europeans to visit the Americas, did they leave their signature here too? Turns out they did. This is the, this is the Kensington runestone, found in Minnesota in 1898. A farmer named Olaf Ullman was clearing land when he stumbled upon a curious-looking rock. Upon, co upon closer inspection, he realized there were foreign markings on it. Years later, he had it analyzed and translated. The inscription stated that it was left by Scandinavian travelers in 1362, a.k.a. pre-Columbian Vikings. Remember, according to Templar tradition, the earliest Vikings were of Templar origin. Then there's the Narragansett runestone found in Rhode Island in 1939, also with Viking runes. Only 14 miles from where the runestone was discovered is Newport Tower, a mysterious eight-column structure that is rumored to have been built by Vikings in the 1500s as a way to track the solstices. The local museum says it was just the base of a lighthouse, but most locals disagree. As far back as the early 1800s, records and legend have given credit to Vikings. It was, and still is, one of Rhode Island's most famous tourist attractions. But why eight columns? Why not just build it as one solid cylinder? Well, the answer leads us back to Gnosticism. The number eight is highly significant to Gnostics. It, rep it, represents, completely, it represents completeness, a divine fullness. Remember earlier when I mentioned Jesus was initiated in the Great Pyramid? Well, there's a reason for that. If you watched a recent episode about the pyramids, you remember that the Great Pyramid has eight sides, not four. To this day, Templars are initiated in the Great Pyramid, and they believe that Egypt was one of the main sources of wisdom for the original knights. And if you look, the number eight is everywhere in Templar symbolism and architecture. The Maltese cross has eight points and was worn by a medieval order of knights that were attacked by fire. Today, it's the symbol of many firefighters. Buildings like Temple Church and Ely Cathedral in England have octagonal features and the number eight scattered throughout. You only have to look at a few pictures of Roslyn Chapel to start seeing the pattern crop up again and again. In short, evidence of the Knights of Templar is everywhere, but it would be criminal to do an episode about the Knights of Templar without mentioning the Freemasons. Countless rites, symbols, and beliefs interweave the two groups almost seamlessly. The connections created the basis for entertainment like the Da Vinci Code and National Treasure. Freemasons trace their origins back to the Temple of Solomon, just like the Templars. On Oak Island, Nova Scotia, a money pit was discovered in 1795, along with a Templar engraving. Since then, the Freemasons have been involved with almost every search for the lost treasure. Both Masonic symbols and Templar crosses are scattered across the island. The correlation between the two groups is so deep, they still see each other as brothers to this day. Another deep, connection, another deep connection is with Rosicrucianism, which has heavy emphasis on the rose and the cross, both original Templar symbols. Rosicrucianism is a brotherhood that focuses on primordial esoteric principles, alchemy, and the sacred ancient rituals. Sound familiar? But all this leads to a question. Why? Why did the Templars spend so much time and money to hide their legacy in architecture? Why do they bother with forming splinter groups to keep their beliefs alive? Wouldn't it have been easier to just let their traditions die with them? To give the treasures to someone else to safeguard? Well, maybe, but the Templars had a higher purpose. 
Keeping the artifacts and knowledge safe was just part of it. Their ultimate goal was to change the world for the better. They knew the treasured artifacts and knowledge would shake society's foundation, but they, but they, were, but they were never meant to stay hidden. Eventually, the Knights wanted to share the truth. And the truth, it might come out much sooner than we ever imagined. Shag Harbor episode. Yep. You're just joining. We're just we're just doing a run through of a draft. It's a good story. I would change a lot of that scene. I'll change a lot of that scene. Thanks, Freddie, for the correction. I look up all those names as I'm as I'm writing the script to make sure that I'm, I'm saying them right for the most part. All right. I'm glad you guys are digging it. I'm digging it too. Uh, we are, we almost done. We're getting there. All right. Sorry for word stumbling. This is a cold read. Rosicrucianism. All right. Scene six, modern day implications. <clears throat> Timothy Hogan, the current Grand Master of one of the Templar Orders, is on a mission to prepare the world to embrace these secrets. He insists that his knowledge is powerful enough to not only help, but to drastically alter our society as we know it. Currently, all the Templar treasures are hidden in vaults around the world, seven of which are here in the United States. And according to Hogan, the world is just about ready for their release. He says they'll do it in a way where no one government, no one religion will have complete access to them. It will be controlled to ensure everyone benefits, because really that's the Templar's entire purpose. It's, it's, it has been since the beginning. They wanted freedom for the people, temporal freedom from the king, and spiritual freedom from the pope. Unfortunately, it wasn't possible in the 14th century, but today it could very well, su it could very well succeed. We're at a crux point in society, a tipping point, where many people feel like something is about to happen. They just don't know what. Now, that might be humanity's inexpl inexplicable obsession with death and the end of the world. But maybe it's more than that. Maybe deep down, we all know that we can't go on living this way. The wars, famine, climate crisis, inflation, and high depression rates are getting out of control. But at the same time, there seems to be some sort of awakening happening. Instead of celebrating recent wars, people are protesting them and fighting for peace. They're leaving restrictive religions and droves and seeking personal spirituality instead, similar to what the Templars secretly did. Imagine for a moment how different our planet would be if we had access to Atlantean wisdom and technology. It would cause a revolution. We could finally do what Nikola Tesla almost succeeded at create free energy for the entire planet. It would probably take a while, but eventually the entire population could have plentiful food, clean water, and a stress-free life. Crime, illness, poverty would all be things of the past, all due to the artifacts that are being held in secret vaults around the world. That is, if they're real. Okay, you guys, are, some vote in the chat. Holy cold reagent, did you take diction classes? I did. I did indeed. My first acting coach also happened to be a speech pathologist. So um, I started training with him when I was a teenager, 18 or 19. And, uh, and to get into his school, this is the late, great Michael Blinderman, to get into his school, he had to audition and do a cold read. So I did. Uh, and he said, you're very talented, but your accent is so thick. I can hardly understand the words you're saying. So he helped me get rid of my accent and he helped me with, uh, with some enunciation, but still I'm, I'm stumbling over a lot of these words cause it's, cause it's, it's dense, but I hope you're enjoying it. I like this. 
What's wrong with the accent? <laughs> hey. hey. I mean, that's how I used to talk. I used to sound just like Gino, just a different like version of Gino. You know what I'm talking about? You got to put some Bronx in there. You know, that was my audition. That. Now is the winter of a discontent. <laughs> Make glorious summer by the days of yore? Yes. Um, thanks, Andrew Paranormal. I appreciate that. A lot of loving the story. I'm enjoying it too, but this is the last scene. Scene seven. The majority of the Knights Templar story of alchemy and Atlantean treasures comes from one man, Timothy Hogan. So is he being honest? Well, it's impossible to know for sure, but there are some things about his past that aren't promising regarding his legitimacy. Let's start with his background. He was born into a long lineage of Knights, of Knights Templar and Freemasons. He says his grandfather was a Templar that fought in the Revolutionary War and that he was initiated into the order at the young age of eight. He's been knighted in multiple orders, is a member and leader of various branches of Rosicrucianism, Masonry, and other esoteric organizations. Hogan's written eight books and has given hundreds of lectures on Templars and esotericism. He's been on podcasts, public interviews, and even has a TV show coming out about Templar secrets. In short, he lives and breathes masonry and Knights Templar. For the majority of his life, he was highly respected in the Templar, Masonic, and Esoteric community. He was even elected as Grand Master of one of the prominent Templar orders. It's French. It's French. Uh, but it looks like it's the Sovereign Order of the Temple Initiate. So, what happened? Well, sometime around 2015, he began to be involved with a woman named Heather Tweed. It wasn't an affair, not exactly anyway. According to Hogan, he was already in the middle of a divorce by the time Tweed came into the picture. The trouble really started when Heather Tweed began claiming to be the reincarnation of none other than Mary Magdalene herself. A claim that Hogan not only supported, but encouraged. There's reports that he even started suggesting that if Heather Tweed was the reincarnation of Mary Magdalene, Hogan must be the reincarnation of Jesus. Around that time, he posted this picture to Facebook. A collage of him, Templar symbols, a crucified Jesus, and Mary Magdalene with the caption, The Coming of Christ Consciousness Blessed by the Magdalene. It got to the point where the Templar order he belonged to, OSTI, gave him an ultimatum. Stop supporting these beliefs or leave. Well, Hogan refused to do either. In 2016, OSTI unanimously voted for Hogan to step down as the Grand Master and leave the order entirely. Begrudgingly, Hogan left, but he created his own order shortly after, taking a good portion of OSTI archives with him. When OSTI demanded he return the things he stole, he again refused, ignoring the multiple cease and desist orders placed against him. One man, an alleged ex-friend of Hogan, says Hogan changed drastically after meeting Heather Tweed. According to this ex-friend, multiple people have had to contact the FBI because Hogan is claimed to be a government operative with top-secret clearance. Another person on a forum suspects he went crazy after years of ingesting metals from failed alchemical experiments. Some of these are speculation and impossible to verify, but what we know for certain is that the OSTI order unanimously voted Hogan off due to his interactions with Tweed, whatever the specifics were. However, it's important to note that the OSTI, the order Hogan was kicked off of, is one of the only esoteric Knights Templar orders. The rest are non-denominational and openly reject any claims to esotericism and connections to ancient Atlantean artifacts. Based on a few things on the OSTI website, their beliefs are very similar to Hogan's. They talk about a primordial tradition, Pythagorean concepts, intuitive knowledge, and a mission beyond basic warrior monks. 
and some of Hogan's books, lectures, and interviews about alchemy and ancient artifacts happened when he was still grandmaster of OSTI. He's been talking openly about this stuff for decades, years before OSTI elected years before OSTI elected him as grandmaster. So what does that mean? Well, it means Hogan wasn't kicked off for believing in Atlantis. OSTI knew exactly what they were getting into when they elected him, implying that they supported his claims of alchemy, treasure, and the history of the Knights. The question then becomes, if there are treasures, why would the other orders deny their existence? If Gnosticism is integral to the heart of Templarism, wouldn't all orders embrace those ideas? Here are three potential explanations. Hogan, and by association the OSTI order, are nuts, and they made it all up. There are no Atlantean artifacts. But Hogan's dug himself into a hole and can't get out without admitting deceit. He's telling, he's telling the truth about the artifacts, and the other Templar orders are either unaware of them or don't want the secret out yet. Or he's nuts and telling the truth or at least part of the truth. Maybe they do have the Holy Grail, but there's only one Ark. Maybe the Emerald Tablet was real, but manna was just a type of bread they ate in the Bible. And maybe the modern-day Templars don't have any of it. Maybe the Masons do, or another secret group Hogan's involved with. Or a fourth option. His alleged claims about being a secret government operative are true, and he was sent out to spread misinformation and confuse the masses. The origin of the Knights is another mystery. A quick quick Google search will tell you that almost all historians claim the Knights started in 1118 as defenders of Christianity. They became filthy rich, and the Pope and King killed them to maintain power. That's it. A few sites will talk about secret treasures. A few more will allude to the possibility of escape, but most insist that the entire order died out and vanished. But what about the scattered evidence of the Templars around the world? There's debate about the authenti- there's debate about the authenticity of the two rune stones, but everything else appears directly tied to Templars. If someone's going to take the time to carve a symbol into stone, you can assume it wasn't for and giggles. Every Templar carving in the cathedrals and churches was meant to be there. Architecture, symbolism, those were a language on their own one that we don't fully comprehend in our modern world. That tells us that at least for a few centuries after their disbanding, the Templars were still around. Unofficially, yes, but there nonetheless. And the stories of Atlantean treasure, free energy, and ancient documents? That's nothing new. Those legends have been around forever, and more seem to be popping up each day. But until we have physical evidence, they will remain legends. So is Hogan just jumping on the Atlantis bandwagon? Or is the link between the Knights Templar and Atlantis more than we ever imagined? Are there really underground vaults hidden around the world with ancient technology that could rid us of poverty and war? Hogan also seems passionate about his work and open to scrutiny. When asked, he said he would welcome testing on when asked, he said he would welcome testing on the bones of Jesus, John the Baptist, and Mary Magdalene. He says there's ship's logs that prove the Templar is scattered around the world, and he's willing to share them. He shared pictures of, of him. He shared pictures of himself extracting manna on Facebook. Of course, there's no way to really know if the substance is manna. But overall, he seems willing and ready to get this information out to the world, and insists that it's for the benefit of all humanity. Hogan insists that the Templars are going to reveal these artifacts very soon. If there are no artifacts, that seems a foolish promise to make. When he talks about the divine in each of us, he seems to believe it. So do we believe him? Well, as always, that's up to you. But if he is telling the truth, humanity's future might not be as doomed as we think. Maybe the catalyst we've all been hoping for is hiding in a vault right below our feet. All right, let's 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 see what the chat thinks. So Hogan's heroes. Yeah, Hogan hooks up with a wacky chick. Says she's Mary Magdalene and he's he's Jesus. He got yokoed. He got yokoed. Okay, I think this is this is going to be a fun episode. It I, I got some work to do on it. 
People are oh, super oh. excited about it. Good. Good. I mean, a, a story about the Templars in Atlantis, that's a clicker. That's a clicker. Um, thank you. I appreciate the compliments in the uh, in the chat. It's not, it's not easy to do that ice cold. Um, Gustavo's looking forward to it. Rogue RN, can't wait to see it. Love this one. Is this next week's episode? Yes. So I got to get cracking on it. <laughs> Yes. Uh, it's okay. I'll have time to do this. I get, cause, so the next step, folks, uh, thanks very much, Mr. Black, Rian, and Great Babe. So the next step when we get something like this is I, I just start pulling it apart. Whenever something is mentioned, um, I, I check the facts, make sure these are real things. I learn how to pronounce the, the French words correctly <laughs> and all that stuff. Uh, Hecklefish does his own voice. Who does your voice? Roddy, put a little Bronx in there. Sometimes it slips in there. Thanks, Eddie. So you have to do this one and the JFK podcast for next week. Okay. So that'll be fun. You've got a busy weekend. <laughs> busy weekend. So people in the chat are bored and disappointed. Well, what are you going to do? Well, uh, also, if you're disappointed, that means there's something that you were looking for. Tell us what you were looking for in there that we missed. Uh, you got time to to send it in to us. Let us know. Or don't. Or I got it. <laughs> I was or about to I say, let, let AJ do his magic. Yeah, that's just that's just that's just a cold, ice cold read from a script I've never seen before. So that's that's not a finished episode. So um, so if you were bored, I understand that because there are chunks of this that are dull. There, you know, there are chunks that are dull of architecture stuff. I need to rework all of that. The Rosalind Chapel stuff is very good, but I've debunked a lot of that in other episodes, so I have to be mindful of that. Um, mm -hmm. I also don't want to be too disrespectful to uh, Christians here. I love the I love the bones, and that Mary had children with John the Baptist and Jesus. That's 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 a, a lot. That's explosive. So we got to be respectful there. But for the most part, I think we have a pretty good structure here. Did this guy write a, a book that I can read? It's uh, <clears throat> Liz wrote that episode. Nice but job, we'll Liz. Have to see. But um, it, it's covering a book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are good episodes because it's usually it it saves me a lot of time on the researches because I basically do a book report, kind of kind of like um, like the Neanderthals episode. It was really just a book report on that on uh, on Vendramini's book. I just turned it into a story. Yep. Duplex is nice, nice work, Liz. All right, so we're coming up on two forty two forty two. So this is going to be a three hour uh, podcast broadcast live stream, whatever you want to call it. We've got seventeen minutes to get through some super chats. You guys want to be up here for those, or do you want me to blow through them? It's up to you. And it'll go faster this way. Uh, oh, Andrew learned about Mirepoix. I'm glad that you learned about that. That's important when making your soups. Wreaking havoc. Thank you for the 20. Jen's going to hit you with a frying pan spermia. <laughs> there is no violence in my home, despite what Reddit says. <laughs> There's no violence in my home. Uh, Dharma Krez from 1999. Awesome episode. Glad to see you back after well deserved break. I uh, was bummed there wasn't a Gen cameo explaining how astronauts got through the Van Allen belt. <laughs> Thanks, Dharma. I wasn't on break. We we're, we're actually working. We skipped we skipped the week in order to the, the we could have gotten an episode out instead we decided to delay it so we can get a little bit ahead so we can take a break. Like an actual like go out of town for a couple of days. Jen and I haven't done that in years. 
Jake Bess, five. Uh, the Wi-Fi Files, all of you so astounding, tremendous, that sometimes I think you're all AI bots. Is this true? Johnny Shabazz, 2345. So where do you think life originated before the cosmos tripping variety? I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm, you know, I, I kind of am a believer in the simulation theory. So I can certainly see you boot up the simulation and you're going through the menus and it's like, hey, do you want to, you want life? Yeah. Click the life button. You want it to start. How do you want it to start? Ah, start microbes. And then it goes from there. You know, that seems to make sense to me or God. What's the difference? There's Jossie for 10. Have you ever thought about doing a video on the Phoenix lights? It comes up quite a bit, but I don't know what I can add to the subject, Jossie. You know, besides just saying, here are the lights. Um, it's a great UFO story. Maybe we can we can stick, stick it in with an episode with a few others. It's, it's uh, Phoenix Lights is a good story because there's so much video of it. But I, I don't know if there's any a ton of new information out there. Remember they said they were flares? That was the story for a while. Flares travel like across the country. There's Wayne for 20 Canadian. I want an extra large Y Files beach towel. That's a great idea. Beach sounds a great idea. Jen's down there nodding at you. Nicely done. This is Richard Bramlett. By the way, Richard Bramlett is the hybrid, the hybrid from Discord. So would Crab Cat Whiskey make one look better or worse? Also, unicorn high unicorn. I think he's flirting with me. Um, Might be. <laughs> Richard, you know I'm open-minded, but I'm happily married and and, you know. There's the Dude87, very reliable. Hey, AJ, great show. Have you thought about doing it after files more often, perhaps twice a month? Much love from Connecticut. Dude, for a while, we did it every single week. It's just the episodes have gotten so long and so intense that there's just not enough time to do it. It's it's exhausting. Um, it, it's it's really hard to, like I, like I said earlier, this is, this is me that you see on the show. This is my personality. I tell the truth. I... All the good and bad parts of my personality. I, I, if you ask, I will answer. But the energy is turned up, is amped up because if it's just, is I, I also want you to be entertained and have fun, and uh, it to to just be on for hours and hours is very difficult. So like, we'll finish the episode and I'll talk to the team. We'll just say, great episode, what what, what worked, what didn't work. And then we shut it down and then I go, Ugh. and I go home and I, I pour a big old glass of bourbon. But if we can get more ahead, if we can maybe get to a consistent length of episodes, like 30 minutes, uh, have it so I'm doing no editing, then we could certainly do more live streams. I would like to. They're fun. Um, but I would like to add a little more structure to the live streams instead of just reading super chats. I'd like to do more stuff like read some scripts, have the, have the team interject with other stuff. Uh, I have a whole list of weird videos I was going to go over tonight, but it got too late. So that's those are plans if we can get ahead. Brian Sincerbo with a very generous 4848. Great to have a new episode and After Files tonight. Always a treat. Would totally and proudly wear a tinfoil hat in public. If we could find a decent one, I would too. But it's, they don't look, hang on, lost my mouse. They, they, they don't look good, the ones we've found. If you look up the, like the tinfoil hat on Hecklefish's bowl right now, that's a sample that we got. That's like the best one we could find, and it's you. Like, you wouldn't wear it in public. They uh, they would lock they would lock you up. In laying, thank you for the twenty. Did you ever build the mirror or test anything out like that? I have not. There's a Facebook group that's building a Kaiser Rev mirror. Um, I haven't heard from them. I don't know how far along they were. Someone did send me some photos last week uh, of putting putting something together that looked like a mirror, but I haven't heard from them. Prima says, I'd love to hear the script, Jen. Well, you heard it. And now, and now, why are the mods tipping? I thought... <laughs> they just why? think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> the mods stop tipping. We, we, we pay you. You don't pay us. Besides, you're giving half your money to YouTube. 
Craig, uh, Craig Page for 1999. You need to profile Hecklefish's bastard children. Good heavens. I know he's named them in one of the spots. Uh, he's, I know we've, he's named all of his children, so we know their names, except we do know that Wayne is adopted. I guess I can end this poll now. Charlie Sheen, have you ever gone into the Gateway tapes yourself? I started them, but I, I just didn't stick with it. Don Danielle sending love from Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Holla, Brooklyn. I lived there for a while. Park Slope. Park Slope, Don. Uh, Ezio Morte. Mort, Mort. We are the aliens. AJ, we're so different. Cheers from a Patreon member from Greece. We love you, mate. Thanks so much. And thanks for supporting via Patreon. By the way, that's the best way to support the channel. I didn't plug that much tonight. I guess that's fine. Patreon is the best way to support the channel. It's all, for as little as three bucks a month, and you get all kinds of perks. Videos early with no commercials. That really hasn't been that great of a perk for the past year or so because we've been running so behind. But for example, our upcoming episode about dreams and this weird dream, it's a cool episode about dreams. That's almost ready, and Patreon members are going to get that like two or three weeks early. And that's, that's really the plan is as soon as an episode is finished, Patreon members get to see it, even if it's not scheduled for public view for a month. Plus, you get extra live streams every week um, that are just for members, including one tomorrow morning. Ah, uh, Lagoon. Love the show. Curious if you had any book recommendations, read the phenomenon. I, I, I don't. But questions like that, I, it, I can't answer on short notice. Um, when I was... Uh, for a brief while, I was a media trainer for radio. I, 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 I taught Playboy Playmates how to be radio hosts. Uh, plot twist, they can't. Uh, but one of the things I would tell them is you ask for a story, you won't get a story. Because I'm on the spot. Like during the live stream for the Patreon members, it was, you know, name your three favorite sci-fi movies. That, ah, I, can't, I can't do that. I need, I need time. So uh, no book recommendations, but I, that's something I can think on and maybe we can post it on Patreon for, for everybody to see or something like that because uh, I do have some recommendations. Baby Mama Mel, thank you for the two. AJ always looks mischievous. I always am a little, I always am a little roguish, aren't I? You are. You're slightly roguish. Slightly and sometimes rogue. more than slightly roguish. Sometimes I'm a bit of a jerk. <laughs> I didn't say that. She didn't have to. Uh, there's Pugman 99. Adrian, would you please create Crab Cat Sunnies with your groovy tint le lenses? I guess, well, I mean, we're looking into doing something with a glasses company for these because people have asked for them, but there's nothing. These are like Amazon cheap glasses. If you go on the official Wi Files Reddit, there's a link to these if you want to buy them. Uh, I honestly think I look stupid wearing them, but it's the only way I can see. I I, I would love to just not have these on my on my face, but there's where we are. There's Sean for two Rosicrucians in the Templar episode. Well, you just heard it. I'll get into them a little bit more. John Silver, I just finished binge watching all your previous episodes. Love my content. Keep it up. Well, thanks, John. Binge watching is so good for the algorithm. Oh, it loves it. That's a, a, a Gino would help us out. Gino would just put like put on the playlist and just and just all night long, just Wi Files, Wi Files. Algorithm really likes that. It means you're coming back. William Ward, thank you for the 1999. I really appreciate that. John Patton, very generous tonight. Thank you for the hundred dollars. Love for the science episode. So we'll do more. We'll do more of those if um, if this episode continues to perform well. We'll do more science episodes. <laughs> I, just saw, I just saw you guys dancing because we brought a little bit of I thought that the episode was I mean I thought the episode was was good but I didn't I don't know I didn't think it would do super well because it doesn't have any wacky wacky stuff in it it's got 445,000 views so far uh oh Still there's number one there's stuff in the in the private chat a name I can't oops no no don't I'm not reading it I'm not reading oh, it. There's, it's, there's nothing in there. 
Uh, by the way, and you guys know that when you private chat me during the show, I don't, I don't look in there. I know. Okay. We know. There's Ginger Hulk 24. Love the content. Listen to work almost every day. Heard every episode twice. I'm the KM slash head cook at an Italian joint in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Smoking marijuana like a Woodstock hippie. The amazing poet Afro man. <laughs> I've smoked pot with Afro man twice. You did? Yeah, twice. Uh, can, it, can we get it officially on the record that the weed that Elon smoked on Rogan's show was your weed? <laughs> I, let's make it official. <laughs> at, at the time, at the time, like Tesla stocks like tanked because of that. And we, Gino was calling it like the most expensive joint in LA. <laughs> it's like that joint cost $3 billion. <laughs> <laughs> Colette for 25 Canadian loves the channel any chance you'd cover Luce's trust uh, ris risque I don't know who that is but if it's risque probably not but we can do risque on the podcast please give Hecklefish a thin bump for me hugs from Sudbury Ontario P.S. tonight's episode was awesome I'm glad you liked it I'm glad too because you know we go back and forth. We'll we'll pitch topics in the production meeting, and AJ will go, "No, boring. People won't like it. People won't watch it." And there's a lot of really good science stories that um, we've kind of put on the back burner. Five plus zero zero. That I think that we can now bring back around. Well, more importantly, more digital studios. Wife wants to know where Jen got her chair. Amazon. Amazon. Yeah, it's not, we, we didn't like hire interior designers <laughs> to to deck out the studio. Everything is is basically cheap Amazon stuff. Or living spaces. Yep. You can or get good Wayfair, Wayfair. That's just what I need. Or Wayfair, yeah. Uh Wayfair a lot. You guys are giving free commercials, but uh we can't support Wayfair. Well, uh, Juwan Castle, another uh, banger. Victoria looking sex, eh? Am conflicted. Recently got a good job offer at a big company. My current job is also not bad. Now I'm finally gelling with my role here. Should I leave any tips? Um, you got it's there. It's about money. You know, if if you're telling me they're going to double your salary, and uh, I would say that look at the, go to the new job. You know, it, depending on how old you are and what your life is like. If you're older, you're more settled. Money's not really in a thing. If you're happy and gelling with your job, stick with it because uh, you're very lucky. But if you're conflicted, then it means you're thinking about it, which means there's something going. If your first thought something isn't, wrong. "Oh no, I can't leave this job that I'm in. I love it here." Right. So sit down and, some, and make it pros and And sometimes when people ask for advice like that, they're really asking for permission. Right. So think on it, Juan. Lonely man, thank you for the 20. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here for a lively fella like me. Y'all are amazing. You are amazing as well, my friend. Happy birthday, Birth Evie. Sorry. They asked for a shout out. Whose birthday is it? Evie. This is your birthday song. It isn't very long. Ole. Earth Singularity 50. Love you. What moons are going to cause an eclipse in the future? What is your favorite moon? Mine is our own moon. But what is yours? Or for everybody, what is your favorite eternal love? So ask for a story and never get a story. I, I don't know if I have a favorite moon. Ence Enceladus is pretty cool. Um, and Europa is pretty cool. I'd like to know what's going on in those places. Lonely man for 999. We got uh, 90 seconds left here. Thank you for everything all you do. The Wap Files is the best show on YouTube. Lonely life on my end. Nice to be with everyone here. Oh, I'm sorry to hear you that, lonely man. But look, maybe the first step is changing your username. Yeah. Because, because you're putting it out into the universe, the loneliness. Change it to wealthy man. Change it to the low yeah. to the wealthy, to the handsome, wealthy man looking or something like that. And you just watch. Out of out of the sky, right there. 
what was you remember my my handle on on match.com that that won you over Jenny brainy clown brainy clown yep we support clowns perfect we do support clowns i i don't i i i i, I fear clowns i have clownophobia there is mike and murph 5555 Hello. Look at you. thank you for that juicy tip human Great show tonight. It makes think more of the why than the how. Sometimes I think by intentional design, we are forbidden to know the why. Maybe the answer won't be available to us till our next stage of existence, death. I think about that all the time, Mike. All the time. Like, uh, I hate thinking about dying because the older you get, the faster time goes. And you can go like that and you're on your deathbed. Like that, it's going to go that fast. So when I, when I get into that dark place, I just I go, at least when that happens, just have everything revealed. Just, I just want everything to, I just want to know everything. People, ever, when they pass away, a lot of them, they see something. My dad saw something. Maybe it's the answers. And maybe you're right, Mike. Maybe we're not meant to know until we hit uh, that next level. Thanks, Jeff Rizzo, for the 20. Great avatar there, the great Art Bell. Dude, you have the best channel on YouTube. Art would be proud. Very kind of you to say. I would hope that he would uh, think this channel was fun. A cougar's cub for 20. Love the episode. With the out Wi files, do a ghost hunting debunking episode. You guys are great. Keep it up. By the way, Victoria, when is your wiki feet coming online? <laughs> <laughs> LOL, just jokes. I was watching the before stream FTCC. Um, we did a ghost hunting debunking episode. We did. We did. Skull monkey. Why not? Appreciate okay, the generous monkey. tip. Robert Cole for 20, do a show on Area 51 and the Proving Grounds in Utah. I go to Area 51 every two years while I visit Vegas, seen in Phil Strange Craft. Stay at the Little Alien. Yeah, you could stay at the little alien. That's there. That's on the extraterrestrial highway, right? Eric Bishop, thank you for the generous donation. I'll donate the hell with that guy. I love this group. I love everyone involved. I'm glad we've got the after files back. Needed to dip, <laughs> needed to dip the Diet Coke jar. As always, Victoria is the best of us. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. <laughs> Zeb says, for the discussion earlier, pain demands to be felt. Can't recall where I heard that, but it fits with what you were saying before. Pan-fried spermia. Pain demands to be felt. I don't know where I heard that. And we were talking about Maggie having a rough time, and you were just saying, Ah. You know. Ah. Sometimes you just have to just, and this too shall pass. It shall. There's the Red Baron Snoopy. Whoa. Now the song, the song is in my head I now. Know. It's in my head. Uh, my mother used to tell me I was from Earth, but I think she was mistaken. Love the show and all that you guys do. Thank you. She might have been mistaken. <laughs> Victoria, love for the creator is the only night of the week I stay up late. Oh. I appreciate you hanging out there. Speaking Thank of staying, staying up late, it's about time we get out of here, isn't it? Where is uh, <laughs> oh, that? that well, that. they see me swimming in my waist. Send me money, cause you know that my bowl is dirty. Cause you know my bowl is dirty. Cause you know my bowl is dirty. Wanna smell my bowl? It's dirty. Come sniff my bowl? It's dirty. My poop is nasty. It's floating. Please tip me cause you know that my bowl is dirty Cause you know my bowl is dirty Cause you know my bowl is dirty Wanna smell my bowl, it's dirty Come sit my bowl, it's dirty Jim Vincent, I up Corey at 201 Can't get enough, no spread the word uh, Enough for him That's uh, Jim, I gotta check and see if there Oh, there's a 202 What do you got? There's a 205 No, I'm just kidding, there's, there's not There's not There's not uh, there's Paul. He's our biggest supporter. <laughs> Just woke up. Missed the episode premiere. Sorry, but I want to send some love to the team. Please don't be afraid to ask me for more help. We well, appreciate that, Paul. Thank you, Paul. And Paul also says, 
that he loves fancy Gino. Ready for stogies and scotch. Here's to Gino, Story Hour, and Clownvis. Cheers from Jennifer. Thank uh, you. Oh, sorry, it's Dr. Jennifer. It's yes. Dr. Jennifer. She earned that title. Which she deserves to be called. There's Paul is back. Hang on just a second. The- Linda, here, I just want to send some love to Linda. I'm glad that we helped lift your mood. I can't even imagine. I have two sisters, and I adore them more than anything. And, and uh, you are especially in my prayers, so. I'm glad we helped lift your spirits a little bit. Thanks for that, Linda. Sorry about your loss. I can think of nothing worse. Jacob Hallenberger, five. Have you, do you ever feel like God is just a kid with an ant farm? I do. Yep. <laughs> yep. Brian Ricky likes the Tony Stark glasses. I, we, I, we have to change the, the, the link on Reddit to an, to, to an affiliate link. At least I should make 10 cents for each of those. That's right. Uh, Sam says, for alcohol sales, Speak Easy Co. will sell compliant and everywhere. Uh, Gino, would you write that down? We already, uh, that's who sent us the samples. Yeah, we're talking yeah. to them. <laughs> yep, that's them. Well, Victoria, thank you so much for your help tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Gino, another great story hour. Thank you. Uh, remember, you don't have to pay to support us. Please just go to Spotify and uh, give us a, a rating and uh, listen to all the episodes. It'll play right in a row. All right, Gino, with the plugs. Jennifer, thank you so much for helping out. You're welcome. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Oh, there she goes. Thanks to ever. Thanks to all of you for hanging out tonight. I'm sorry if I didn't read your super chats. I got to most of them. Um, but your generosity keeps us going, and we couldn't do this without you. Again, the best way to support is through Patreon. It's only 3 bucks a month. You get a lot of perks, extra live streams every week just for members, including one tomorrow morning at uh, 9 o'clock. And uh, you get access to merch that only members can uh, get access to. Shopped at thewifiles.com. We keep the prices low on purpose. Um, and thanks for the super chats. I'm going through the plugs in my head. I'm th- I'm th- I'm thrown off by the uh, the loss of the sister. I'm very very sad.
you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Let's hear it for the Wild Wild's house band. You guys sounded great tonight. And take care of those waitresses, will you? All right. Everybody get home safe. This is Hecklefish. And you know what? I did it my way.